Oh, here. Yay. Uh, and uh, we are now going to have the Pledge of Allegiance led by our director and second vice president, James Tung. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, the media is present. Uh, do I have a motion to for Bert to stop talking? No. <laughs> do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Okay. Are we doing this electronically or how are we doing this? Do it by hand. By hand. Okay. So we have a motion made by John Frankel, Second. seconded by Steve. All those in favor of approving the agenda. This is your opportunity if you want to make any modifications to the agenda to do it. No? Okay. All those in favor of the agenda? It is unanimous. Okay. Approval of the minutes. We're going, we're going to approve the minutes as a block, A, B, C, D. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, Bert, moved by Bert Muldow, seconded Second. by Steve. Steve is just going to keep his arm up all day. Okay. So we, we are very excited. I, I acknowledge the media already. <laughs> uh, we're very excited to um, announce the appointment of a new member to our board. Um, he comes with a, an extensive background, albeit it was from the East Coast, but he has a lot of, a lot of uh, and so are we all, uh, a lot of background in homeowners associations, and you'll probably read about him in the papers, and that is Roy Bruninghaus. So, Roy, welcome. Um, we also, so and his term ends in 2020. He actually, uh, this is interesting, he's going to get on for almost three years because the person he replaced was Annette Sewell, who moved over to GRF. We also had another appointment uh, to our VMS board. And this was a reappointment, and it is a reappointment for three years, and that is Dennis O'Connor. Welcome, Dennis. So um, we're very excited about that. So just a few little bits of um, homework. Um, please don't forget to um, update your assessment. There is a, a slight increase, and I don't have the amount because it's different in the garden villas and some buildings. So uh, you will, should have gotten the information in the mail. You, it was in a letter with all a packet of information. And those of you who use coupon books, it's also there because you should have gotten your coupon books. The only thing that is missing from both our letter and from the coupon book, which I'm going to ask uh, you to take care of, Steve, and put it in the newsletter, is if anybody has a, a challenge, and I know if sometimes somebody has a challenge, they get a notice that says your payment hasn't been received or something like, you know, because something went wrong, and they, there's nowhere anywhere as to who to call. And I would always say call Brad, but... <laughs> so I think that we need and we need a contact number if anybody has any questions with their uh, uh, not the amount but with their payment. Yes, John. There's Usually a form. people don't ask questions during my chair remarks. But go ahead. <laughs> There's a form that we all filled out. Uh, I'm not Brad. I'm not sure exactly. It's a, cl uh, a pay form, and if you fill that out, it'll happen automatically, meaning <laughs> that. Uh, Laguna Woods Village will bill you the new amount. What's the name of that form? I don't recall the name of the form, but many, many residents take advantage of that easy pay. Easy pay. Program. Yeah, I got yeah. it. See? Uh, program. And uh, if you have that, then you'll have no problems. If you're paying every month by cash or check, uh, and, and there's an issue, you can always contact resident services or my office directly, but we'll get some contact information out. It happens and, yeah. automatically, meaning that yes, you don't and, have anything to do. And some people have put it on their checking account auto pay. So there are very, various ways uh, to do that. So just to remind you, also, I was reminded by some of the board members that you should be getting your decals for, the car, for your car in the mail. And uh, I would say that you should expect them within the, 
the week, you know, because not every, like two people got them, some didn't. And when you get them, please make sure you put them on your car. <laughs> That's very important. Okay, we had a really good uh, number of people who volunteered to be on VMS because uh, they think that they work less hard than if you work on the board. Well, they're, they're like a little bit right, <laughs> but we're going to change that. In any case, um, we do ask people to please get involved. And getting involved doesn't mean you have to be on the board. Thank you, Roy. But you, uh, it means that volunteer for committees. I mean, you know, if you have any, any place that you have an area of expertise or any area that you would want to gain some expertise, or if there are any board members that you would love to work with, like Bert, for example, or Steve, just, <laughs> he's laughing, uh, please volunteer. We have the list of committees and the chair of committees. We have communication, MNC, energy, so please uh, volunteer. Your talents are very important to us. That's what makes our village grow. And the last thing is, is um, uh, some of you might know that we were going to have a members meeting regarding pickleball. And there was a lot of pushback by the boards to GRF because of concern as to the bidding and uh, the need, et cetera. So I want you all to know, and we, um, United started, did it, but we were right behind them and we, we wanted to work with them. So the members meeting was delayed for December and it is rescheduled for the end of January. A members meeting means it's open to the board members. It isn't a community meeting, but I would assume or hope that GRF is going to have a forum of some type or a meeting of some type where people can express their opinions and concerns. So we're going to push um, Tom, the president of GRF, to do that. But remember, if you do have any concerns or questions, please go to the GRF meeting, which is the first... The, the first Tuesday of January. So at this point, I wish you all a happy holiday, and I hope that for those of you who have had a challenging 2017, that 2018 is better. Uh, so now we will go to um, whoo, the open forum. We have people, um, and you're going to lead that, Cheryl? Yes. Okay. Okay, we have a couple requests to speak. And our first speaker is Marka Marika Tanigas. Good morning. I wish everybody a nice holiday and a happy new year. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Okay, I have two uh, problems, uh, well, challenges, as we say in the new world. Um, we have a tree that I have requested to remove that is close to a building. Now, once I was told it was diseased, it was going to be removed. Then a year later, so this is going on three years, one year later, I was told, no, it's not diseased, we'll talk about it. Uh, the last the time, it was just a couple of months ago, I asked landscaping, they took it up, everybody went out to say, and they said, no, it's not diseased, we're not going to do anything about it. So I have to tell you this. The tree is about three or four feet higher than the gutter. Now, if we just trim it on top, it would prevent the pine needles to go into the gutter and stuff up everything. And the overflow that is right over on uh, uh, air conditioned condenser is ruining it. And because that side of the garage is open, from there it hits into the garage over a low cabinet that the gentleman stored his uh, tools, and that's how he makes the living. So I tell you that if you just take a look at it again and trim it on the top, you don't have to take it out, just trim it on the top so the pine needle doesn't go into the gutter. That's, that's one of my requests, please. I would appreciate that. Also, at that a uh, couple of weeks ago when I was here, um, Dennis was here, and I asked him to change the lantana or replace the lantana. And he said, lantana was the wrong plant. He's going to replace it with something else. So he chose it the first time, so I don't know why he installed it. Okay. I'm going on to the second. This is one of my requests. The second thing is, on the 12th of September, I had a meeting, not exactly regarding this, with uh, Lori, Lori Moss. What happened is, I have asked her several things. 
First of all, I have asked her the schedule of what happens in the building. That is to say, when are we cleaning the breezeway? When are we doing the garage? When are we uh, doing all the maintenance that is necessary? Now, that was on the 12th of September. I have never heard back from her. So I, I think that it's important to know that 5519 does not have a captain. 5519 has a committee. I have been very active, but it's going to be real, relate to somebody else because I'm moving on. I'm leaving Laguna Woods. So, but I wanted to please, this was my last two things, and they were really important for the people. The man has his tool ruined. The other guy has to replace his condenser because the water goes straight on it. So please do something about that. And we would still like to have a schedule of different maintenance. Also, the breezeway is just swept. It has to be washed. It's extremely filthy. So I know that we just had it painted last year, but a wear and tear every day, it makes it really dirty. Thank you very much. My time is up. Bye-bye. Thank you. And, and needless to say, we're going to miss you. <laughs> OK, our next speaker is Martha Copeland. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Um, it says Sheila Bass is uh, up here. Yes. Well, does she want to go first? Clear, no, no, let me no. clear that. I'll fix it. I, I know your name isn't Sheila, so I want it to be correct. Don't Alex, worry. I go Don't by worry. Alex. We're not using your time yet. So, ready? Wait. Okay, Cheryl will tell you when we're ready. Okay, okay. We're ready. here you go. Okay. Um, I've lived here since 2002, and I've enjoyed living here and enjoying many of the amenities. However, lately, last year, we have found, not just me, that the rise in prices has been unacceptable, has been awful. Especially, um, there are several, but I have petitions here that was signed by over 1,200 people. That's over 1,000 people, petitions that were signed by people who live here. Being very upset about the cost if their ID card is lost or stolen or whatever, that it's now $100. And previously, it was $25. Although it costs, from what I understand, who's someone who has worked in plastics, 10 cents to make the ID cards. And now it's $100, which is unacceptable to, as I said, over 12, over 1,200 people, over 1,000 people. And we would have gotten more signatures. I have signatures and the addresses of these people if we had more time. Um, I, I have spoken to somebody on United, and she said that the people in United still only pay $25, but we in third have to pay 100 I don't understand that. Why is there a discrepancy about who pays what if we all live here together and we all have um, ID cards? So that was very upsetting. Also, I've, I'm sure you've heard most people are very upset about the $5,000 extra people have to pay when they buy a house here. We were told, if you read the, uh, the Globe, there have been many letters that they're charging that amount so we won't have a rise in our monthly assessment. But we have had a rise in our monthly assessment. And the, these were mainly upset that we're not ask our opinion about anything, the residents. I previously had asked for a form to try to be on the board. You have 30 seconds left. OK. And most of the questions had to do with business experience. I was a teacher for 40 years. I don't have that much business experience. But I have been here, and I know what's good for us. And maybe you think you know, but you've forgotten. OK, thank you very much. Should I leave these um, petitions? Oh, you can leave them with Cheryl. And we will, get, we will respond to all of your issues at the end of the, the um, comments. OK. OK, our next speaker is Sheila Bass. 
Good morning. I am seeking clarity on two matters by the residents of our village. Number one, car window decals. I just received my 218 decal. It came with a letter from GRF and was signed by the resident services supervisor. As such, I would assume the issuing of car decals is the responsibility of GRF. So how come the letter contained information that the replacement fee for a decal should have different costs for United and Third? 125 for United and 50 for Third. What has happened to our shared concept? How can the mutuals be allowed to set their own fees on this vital document? Number two, proposed increase in fee for replacement of lost ID card. The proposed increase from 25 to 100 is outrageous. This identity card is vital for residents to survive in the village. Everyone is up in arms over this, as you can see from that petition. And we had already over a thousand signatures. Our monthly assessments are supposed to cover all general expenses, including the provision of such a card. Cards do get mislaid, or even worse, if one's wallet is stolen. This should be replaced as a courtesy. However, if a resident mislays the ID card constantly, then there could be an additional fee for the first replacement with an increase for each loss thereafter. Do not punish all of us for the behavior of a few. On behalf of all the residents, I urge you to rescind the proposed $100 replacement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there anyone else, Cheryl? No, that concludes our speakers. OK, thank you. Um, I would um, ask Bert Baum to um, address the ID cards, if you if you don't mind. No, why should and, uh, and then and then I will ask Bert Muldow to address uh, Marika's comments, and then also. Um, so let's start with that. Okay, let me give you a little background on the ID cards, because I have to tell you. We are looking into this situation. The $100 fee was specifically geared to our lease policy. And for a non-return by the renter of the ID card, or particularly the owner, because he's responsible for it, of the renter's ID card, <coughs> we assessed a $100 fee. And the reason we did this is, and this is generally true. There's a lot of chicanery involved in these ID cards, particularly in, on the leasing aspect. What happens is the owner claims that the ID card was lost, another one is produced, and then the renter has two ID cards or maybe even more. And then other people are coming into this community who should not be here. So we thought that this was a good way to stop this, or at least slow it down. And I have to tell you, I don't know, and I've just asked uh, Chris about this, why now everyone is being charged $100. I think there's a miscommunication here, and we will, we will, we will clear that up. So that, that was not the reason why this fee was instituted. Uh, thank you, Bert. And, and truthfully, and I'm sorry, Alex, we don't allow a debate on this, so we have your question and we totally understand it. Our total intent for raising the fee was to discourage people who casually said, oh, goodness gracious, I lost my card. Let me get another one. And then, they were, and then they would return one, and then they still had one, and were trying to use our facilities, whether it was golf or, or whatever. So that was the intent. The intent was to protect the residents from people abusing the, the things that you all pay for. The intent was never to make money off of the residents. So we came, became aware of it last night because we went to a meeting and we said, uh-oh, something went wrong with 
our original conception to what has happened. So we will definitely uh, fix this and figure out how to make it a system where maybe it's the second time you lose a card or, and we really, we don't wanna punish the residents. We know how much it costs. And the reason why United doesn't have uh, a, that same issue is because they don't have as many renters. So they never had to deal with it as we had to deal with it. And that's what it was all about. So I would probably, I don't know, Bert, you have to correct me if, we have to uh, vote on something that says we're going to freeze freeze it at the twenty five dollars until we reclarify. And Chris, you could you could help me with this. So we know it's something that we have to uh, fix. And there's no need, Alex, because I know you for a long time, for you to have to take your time to get a petition. Probably if you told us and came up to us, and you know, but me and Bert from the Bridge Club. Uh, and said, what is going on with this? That's why we need your input. That's why we need the residents. Sometimes something happens that didn't go, quite go the right way, and we need your help to correct it. You know, it's your privilege, right to get petitions, but we could have probably fixed this like two months ago. So thank you very much for your concern, and make sure we have an open door with the residents, as does Brad, to, to try to help you um, help things that might not have worked out the right way. Bert has something else to say. Yeah, just generally, we do not discriminate against teachers. We would <laughs> welcome you. We would welcome you to run for the board or to become an advisor. Some of my best friends, including my wife, is a teacher. OK, so, so does that, I think that should satisfy that issue for now. And, and Chris will help us and Brad to make sure we take care of this. So thank you. So the other um, real concern that I see is the, um, before I turn it to work, the transfer fee is a GRF issue. A GRF is the person responsible for the transfer fee. And this was really discussed at the finance meeting. And this is something that we, um, agreed with with them but this is where it's up to you to come to the budget meetings and, and let your, yourself be heard so um that's enough of that i'm going to turn it over to bert Muldo, who's just dying to talk about the and then and then james about the tree and bert about the um schedules and breezeway dirty yeah the schedule should be available so uh, i'll look into that but it should be really, uh, I thought it's posted to the uh, website. <clears throat> is it on the website, Brad? The maintenance schedules. Yes, they are. All the schedules are on there, janitorial maintenance, right. paving, the whole load. Yeah. And but I, I would like to point out, you know, in the comments with regard to um, the rising fees, um, we've been very fortunate in this community, okay, 52 years, there has never been, never, a special assessment, but we're 52 years old. And as you get to be older, you understand that your medical bills go up, <laughs> aches and pains go up, and in our community, we are hurting. Our sewers need replacement. Our waste lines are being blocked. They have to be replaced. Um, we have uh, water pipes that are leaking. We have many, many maintenance problems. We can choose either not to raise assessments and just limp along until things collapse around us, or we could basically raise assessments, or perhaps down the road, there may be a need for a special assessment to deal with some of these major problems that we're facing. And I think it's important that the community understand this. You know, it's not that, oh boy, we're gonna raise assessments because we need more money. We need more money if we need it. We need it for the maintenance of this community. And if we don't maintain what we have here, the value of all property in this community is going to go down. And it'll go down very rapidly. So I think, you know, with any complaints with regard to assessments or things of that nature, uh, be aware that down the road sometime, there may be a need for special assessment in the community. I think that's important that people wake up and realize that. Well, I, I, do, I, want to, I want to say that the next thing we're going to do is read in the newspaper, as reported by The Globe, that third announces that they look forward to a special assessment. 
And I'll, I will at that point want to kill myself. So the basic thing is, is we, as a board, are doing everything we can. And we watch Brad and the staff like a bunch of hawks. And to make sure that we are not wasting any of Third's money and they are, we are taking care of the infrastructure. And the biggest thing is, is you know, we've had dry rot in here for a long time. And six years ago, before Bert and I were on the board, they weren't taking care of it. They'd say, well, we can wait. And you can't, you really, they should have never waited. So we have a very active dry rot campaign. We do, now they're gonna correct me, uh, the copper pipelining, we're doing waste, we're doing, trying, we're trying to fix the streets. Every bit of our money is not on frills and, oh, let's, you know, make the front of the garages pretty. No. Everything that we want our money for is to make this community more, more structurally sound. I mean, we all live here. It's our, it's our homes that we want to take care of. So we were very careful over the past few years not to raise the assessments, but we have raised it just very slightly because of all of the, especially dry rot. John is going to give a report on dry rot. So uh, we are not wild and crazy, and we really try to save money all the time. We're always trying to save money on water. We're trying to save money on energy, which we have done quite, quite a good job at. So we're trying to save because we have to spend, and that's our goal. So I hope I'm not alive when there's a special assessment, and I'm still young, so I don't know. So in any case, James, it's for your, your time to talk about the tree. Uh, yes, uh, Marcia, the committee and uh, staff, we took a look of your neighborhood, your tree. I'm glad that you agree we don't need to remove that tree. However, we will trim according to our schedule. The schedule may be February or March. If you want to ask for off schedule trimming, you need to pay extra. So that's, we will trim the tree. Thank you. Okay, so that ends our. Um... Uh, did Bert's answer address this decal problem? I don't think so. A different price. Oh, I, and, no, and I'm sorry, Bert, um, we have no control over what United charges and why the prices would be different. Actually, I didn't get my decal yet, so I haven't even seen that. Yes, sure. Well, you can, but the thing is, is, is um, you know, that would be something we would have to talk, turn over to. Um, this came from GRF, so it should, they should have control over this. That you, Mutual should have nothing to do with that. Well, and I don't know why the prices are different or anything. I'm glad thirds is lower. Yes, but that's, that's not the point. I, I, I just, know, but that's uh, <laughs> no, I understand. Yes. And we haven't, you know, on the boards, we haven't even seen this. I don't know, GRF, but, so yeah, so right. nothing to do with the Mutual. And when it's Brad's turn, we're going to ask him to answer this. Okay, can I have this? Yeah, we certainly. <laughs> okay, so, and we are now, we've had our responses, so now we're going to have, Brad is, is going to be soon, so, so um, we're going to have our update from our VMS newly reappointed director, Dennis O'Connor. Good, Good morning, morning Dennis. Thank you for reappointing me. Uh, it's been an honor, a privilege, and a great learning experience for me. Uh, you may know that I have been a professional student of management for 50 or more, too close, too far. OK. Uh, I've been a professional student of management for uh, more than half a century, and uh, I have taught management. I have written books about management. I have managed, a, I've been a professor of management, a chair of the Department of Finance, a dean of a school of business. I know a lot about management 
or so I thought. Uh, <coughs> I have to tell you that in the last two years, I learned more about management than in any two-year period in my life. Uh, this is something to behold, what you have created and what we are operating now. I know there are problems. Everybody has problems. It's a huge community with different problems. But since getting rid of PCM and going to the VMS model, which you own and therefore the residents own, we have changed the whole atmosphere of the place. Management, Brad, works with you. Your input is solicited, and if not solicited, welcome uh, by the VMS operation. And we hold that organization, VMS, responsible for serving you. After all, you own us. Uh, th this is not, uh, you know, this is not, we're not strangers. And incidentally, this lack of, you know, PCM, it was you were against PCM. You're not so against us now. I mean, we're all part of the same battle. It's, it's an interesting thing. And not only that, you're getting along with each other. I mean, you know, it used to be we'd have fights between United and Third and DRF. It's changed. I mean, we still fight. I mean, you know, like all happy unions, there are moments of difficulty. Uh, but by and large, we've engaged in constructive interaction among the boards and with the management of this company. That has never been here before. That was never here with VMS. How did this happen? Well, first of all, it happened by getting rid of PCM. Uh, you know, I, I hate to admit this, uh, but when I first heard about getting rid of PCM, I said, oh, this is going to be a tragedy. And I'd say I was opposed to it. Then I was, say, okay, I understand this now better. And then I said, uh, well, but we should ease into this a little more slowly. I mean, this was a rush. VMS was set up in a rush. And I thought that was not the ideal way to go. But it seemed to work out better than any of us expected, I think. Uh, why does it work out? Because of the cooperation of these boards and the co with VMS and with each other. People don't understand the time and effort that happens here and what happens in VMS. I mean, we're not building a new building. People don't see it. You, you get a letter in the newspaper or from a friend saying, we're paying more and we're getting less. Not true. First of all, you're not paying a whole lot more. Uh, you're paying some more fees and stuff like that. But if I understand it correctly, the total assessment last year was the same as this year. And in fact, the total assessment this year was the same as the last year of PCM. I mean, assessments have not really gone up a little bit. A little bit, uh, <clears throat> but not really gone up. It's not been more expensive. Why does it work? It works, first of all, because you were smart enough to set up a separate company and then smart enough to hire Brad Hudson. What do you need as a manager? And you got him. He's a manager who not only has experience in running organizations like this, but he also has vision. How can we change this? How can we do this? And he continues to shuffle the cards to get more things done than we ever had before. The way he's done that is by bringing in other professional managers, uh, the department heads. It used to be that the longest serving guy sort of wound up as head of the department. That's no longer the case. This management team that we have now accumulated over the last two years, it's superb. These people are good. They've had experience beyond imagination. And uh, they have appointed people within their grasp also have experience. This is not an, a, a 
homeowners association like the ones that I used to be part of, you know, where you managed by the city of Pants. It's a big business, $100 million more or less each year. And you need good people to run that. And I learned that. And the way you do that is by focusing on what you can do best and figuring out how you can do it. And in every department, there have been substantial changes. And you know about these, so I won't, I won't go over them. But I mean, who could, who could imagine that in resident services, we'd get a call center that provides us with information that we didn't know before. I'm very impressed by that. And you have seen that presentation, I'm sure. But, but people ought to pay attention, because those kinds of things are happening. Or uh, Ernesto was at our board meeting last week. Unfortunately, I was here with you. Uh, but I did see the materials, which I gave to Bert. Uh, but the projects that we have going on, to save this place from collapsing are unbelievable. And, and people say, well, I'm not getting anything. You're getting plenty. When have we had a security place uh, operation led by a guy with the qualifications that all of our previous directors in security couldn't match combined, all of them combined? We have disaster preparedness, all of those kinds of things. It goes on and on and on. But I want to tell you, it all comes back to you because you guys have done a terrific job. And all right, so you screwed up when it's a hundred dollar thing. I mean, oh. <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> and you've been so willing to take the blame for things. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we make mistakes. Even uh, God himself over here sometimes screws up, as you, as you know. Uh, but uh, uh, he's usually willing to change when he screws up. And uh, it's been a real experience. I don't know. You have a strong model here going. And it's very, very nice for me to see how it works out over the next few years, because we're maybe halfway there. His keys are getting good managers and introducing technology. We're just beginning to get the payoff from that. And you should all, you all know this. And you know, Bert already gave his comments about deterioration of the community, the physical structure of this community. We're working on that. And hopefully, we'll continue to do that over the next three years of my term. I, I know Brad, he could sell ice Eskimos, but uh, he also can manage a place like this extremely well. And it's a pleasure working with him and with the other members of the board. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Um, can I we make would, a comments? Wait, uh, can I, I just want to do one thing then. Okay. I would also like, we would also like to at this point thank uh, Dw Donna Dwalaby and Marcy Scheinwald, <clears throat> our other two VMS directors for their service. And we commit that next year we're going to spend more time communicating our needs to you. Right? <laughs> right. Okay, go ahead, James. Well, <clears throat> uh, I just want to echo uh, Bert Maldo's uh, comments when you in the uh, we we point to you the, uh, the the job. You you remember you said, well last year three two years uh, I didn't come to the meeting as often I should. I will improve myself. I just want you recommend I mean remind you that. Well actually, you know to things you did say, <clears throat> we own you, so we can make a suggestion. <clears throat> to your action, what what we think, you should be more busy than we are, because not only in order to for communicate to the staff what we want, what the resident wants, you got find out exactly what we want, the residents wants. Then you got to work with staff, so you <clears throat> almost double up your work. I hope you can achieve for that this time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, James. Yes, Bert? I just wanted to clarify this assessment. 
our assessments went up 1.4 percent. And as part of the assessments, you pay a GRF. That's where they get their money. GRFs went up eight tenths of a percent. Thirds went up six tenths of a percent for a total of 1.4 percent. The first increase in three years. So we we are not looking to raise your assessments. And if you think about it, there are only two ways that we can raise money. We either get it through assessments or we get it through fees. So that's the fact of life. And, and thank you, Bert. And one of the things that we found is that because a lot of the <coughs> record keeping um, wasn't up to date, there are some fees that hadn't been raised for 15 years. And meanwhile, the cost of the employees, et cetera, uh, went up. So therefore, if, if to, to execute the job is more than the money we collect, then everybody has to pay for it. So that's something that we actually introduced to our budget process, a list of all the fees we charge, the history of the fee, how much it costs to do the act. So that's very important. So, but occasionally a, a mistake is made like that $25, $100 one, but um, we're, we're, gonna work, we're gonna really try to work, but we need your input. Okay, so at this point, does anyone else have anything else to say? All right, so now it's um, time for the CEO report. You have 10 minutes. <laughs> gonna put the clock on? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam President, uh, members of the board, uh, community. It's always a, a pleasure to chat with you, and certainly uh, before the holidays, um, it's a good time to to reflect uh, on the year that we've had, and what's been accomplished. And and I, I have to say that um, for this board and community, you've you've gotten so much done. Um, you look at the progress we've made in in. Uh, I'll hit some of Bert's stuff here, but not in too much detail, Bert. But uh, dry rot and, and beam replacement, uh, the epoxy uh, uh, waistline program, the copper pipes, I can go on and on. Um, a lot of asphalt and concrete work this year. Uh, did a lot of remedial landscape work, including uh, fuel modification out there to, to pr protect our community uh, in this time of Santa Ana winds and fires. and. Uh, that contributed a little bit to us getting behind in landscaping, and there was more to it than that, but certainly that was an important initiative, and much more needs to be done in, in fuel uh, modification. Right now, we, I almost feel silly to tell you, I have guys out there cleaning storm drains, and they're just doing a whole elaborate get ready for the, for the dreadful winter, and, and I, I, there's not a speck of, of, of moisture in sight, and so I, I hope that's not uh, wasted, but... We've got sandbags deployed throughout the community and, and just really getting ready, looking at, at various slopes to make sure they're, they're ready for the, for the winter. And if they're not, uh, uh, either stabilizing them or tarping them or doing something so we don't have some sort of a catastrophic event. So there's a lot of work uh, going out uh, in that regard. Um, I'm really pleased with, with the way we've attacked dry rot with our prior to paint program and really going out there and we're not uh, patching and, and painting over poor wood. We're replacing with quality wood and, and quality paint and making sure that, that we don't uh, continue uh, this cycle of dry rot throughout the community. And it, it's just been a great program. No wood, quality no wood. Quality no wood, there we go. Sorry, United, we're still using wood. Well, but really and good third, wood. we're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, really, the key is is the emphasis that you've put into your roofing program as well, and having, you know, high quality flashing and drainage, and then combining it with the prior to paint work, uh, you really get a structure that will repel uh, water and instead of absorb it. And, and so that's been a, a big big effort. Uh, that you've been doing, and I know, I think we spent uh, a million and a half dollars this year just on uh, PVC roofs. And it was a big, big amount. We did a lot of them. We'll do a lot more next year. I think we're done with pretty much uh, a tile and asphalt for several years, and we're really focusing on these these PVC uh, roofs on the larger buildings, and we'll have 
four or five years of that. It's a much better product than we previously used. I think we used tar before. It's, that doesn't last very long. I think we're getting another 10 years out of the PVC. Plus, it has huge environmental benefits by reflecting the sunlight. So there's just a, so many things. I could just go on and on. The wonderful work that we, I think we've done more work in Garden Villas this last year than maybe it's been done in the last several years combined. I mean, I, like, um, I don't know. I, I think people would agree with that, yes? Yes. And so, um, of course, then we went and took the lady who did all that work and have her doing something else now, but we'll, we'll overcome that. Um, and so, <laughs> I mean, I think given that you're basically paying the same assessment that you've been paying and even less than, than you've paid over many years, uh, you're getting much, much more. A lot of things, they don't show. You know, you're, you're putting epoxy on a pipe. Uh, you're, you're, you know, fixing uh, underground backbone infrastructure. It doesn't, doesn't show up. You don't see it. But you'll feel it when you don't get that backup in your home. Little things like, like having uh, every plumbing issue now addressed directly by a plumber immediately. We're not putting that stuff off anymore. And so if you call with a plumbing issue, a plumber's going to come to your house and assess it. Not a, not a security guard or a resident services person on the phone. You're going to get a plumber, and we're going to make sure that it's addressed right then. And, and it ties in with all these other things we're doing. And it, my belief is over time, and Ernesto's too, and I'm sure yours, Bert, that as we do these uh, waistlines and, and, and the copper pipe and, and fix many of these other issues we have, that we'll have less and less of these out calls that are kind of expensive for plumbing services because we didn't take care of our basic infrastructure. And so um, I think that you have a lot to be proud of. Um, you've worked really hard. Some would say too hard. Um, and, but you've got a lot done. There are a lot of accomplishments to show for uh, Bert and, and his uh, uh, residency and compliance committee have, have, have poured over the more difficult issues. You've heard more compliance cases this year. I'm certain of it. I didn't count them. than probably been heard in 10 years. Um, you just, you've addressed difficult issues head on, uh, issues that have never been really handled before. They've just kind of let things slide. Well, you know, we've got other things or, you know, and, and I, I've never, Never, you look at your compliance agendas, they are thick, meaty documents. Uh, and, and they're probably still not, not adequate for the task at hand. I'll grant you that. Uh, we're growing with the program as you're growing in your efforts to enforce your rules and to make this a more livable community. And I think, I think that your efforts, and certainly those of United and GRF, they're trying to do similar things. You know, we all kind of emulate each other. Somebody starts doing something real good, and pretty soon we're doing it over here, which is great for the community. It's a heck of a lot of work, work that's uh, much needed. But I think it's reflective in property values as well. You're seeing phenomenal growth in value here. And, uh, you know, people who, even at these higher prices, come into the community, they go, wow, this is a steal. Um, and they're jumping all over it. Somebody just sold their house in two weeks, full price. Who was that? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what we're seeing out there. And, and though, and it, I think, and not that I want to talk about GRF here, but similarly, we've invested a lot of money in things there that you don't see. You know, you know adding, you know, lasers, you know, to the uh, bandwidth infrastructure so we can triple your internet speed at no cost, really, in terms of uh, the pricing for that. That's all underground stuff hidden in a big building over here in a vault. Uh, you just don't see those sorts of things, but they're, they provide great value to the community. And so there's so much of that that's gone on. And a lot that we've done here at VMS and, and you know, Chuck and his team have spent really a couple years now just, just getting us to a place where now we can embark on these high-tech initiatives that this board's contemplated for a long time. We, we have the capacity, we have the infrastructure, we can, can make that happen. So, so what's, what's the, the new horizon? Obviously, we have to keep these programs going, and Ernesto tells me by, by about mid-January, he'll have uh, all of the current year programs completed. And so uh, we got a little bit of a late start. I think we had a lot of new people, and and we had some new systems, and, and we've got that worked out now. And so next year's programs will start right on time, and 
we'll probably be done by the middle of summer and come back and ask for more money or something. Who knows? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, be a change. Um, but your, your current year's programs will be done in a month or so, and I think uh, you can be proud of, uh, of that work. I did want to share a couple of things that, are, that need to happen, and obviously landscape is, is one of them. Um, we did uh, a lot of fine work this year in, in the sorts of things that don't show up in front of your manor. I talked about fuel modification. We've done you know, a lot of removals. We had a, some huge storms last year that we had to recover from. Uh, we've got a few big projects like that that we still need to take on. Um, but really, the big challenge for next year is, is probably full fuel load modification, protect ourselves from fire. We see what's happening in other communities. We've got to take care of that. And then also slope improvement. Uh, our slopes need a lot of work. Uh, and, then, and then right at your manor, bringing back that sort of curb appeal that you want uh, to see every day when you look outside. And so we're putting a lot of effort on that and bringing in uh, a lot of new trained people who specialize in that sort of thing. And another thing that, that I have to say about landscaping is we, we kind of have done a, a one size fits all. And so we treat every property here like it's a big commercial account, you know, with a four foot wide mower and and, and certain types of equipment. And, and I've asked Bruce to, to look at each area um, and what its needs are. And don't, don't try to shove a four foot mower in a three foot strip of grass. You know, it, you end up whacking the air conditioning unit and breaking pots and things, you know. So, so we're, we're trying to, uh, to tailor our services a little more and just not do a one size fits all. I think you're gonna notice uh, great improvements there. Lastly, just a couple of things I wanted to share with you. Uh, you've seen the city doing some work on gates uh, uh, around on El Toro outside of gates one and five, and that's going to continue for the next couple of days, but they've changed their schedule a little bit. So I'm going to send out an e-blast later in the day. I want to confirm the information. It's going to be a little di different than was previously reported, but it looks like the 20th and the 21st will have some gate closures there. And it doesn't sound like a whole lot. Oh, well, I they're going to close gate five, I'll go out gate six. But when you're running a transit system, um, it's hard to keep your times when, when you have a whole new route you're trying to run in there and, and, and change on the fly as their construction schedule changes. So we'll get that out to eblast later today and, and, and probably throw it on uh, Village Television as well so everybody can get a sense of, of what's going on there. But you will have some gate five and gate one closures uh, later this week, and I want you to be aware of that. And then I also want you to be aware of a lot of work going on at Gate 9 with uh, El Toro and just to be on the lookout uh, for those folks as they're, they're doing their project. So with that, again, I, I've just been so, so proud and honored to be associated with this board and all the work you've done. It's really been a load. Um, as much work as, as you've done, um, I think that next year that we will do even more because you've kind of got the plate set here, um, the table set. Uh, the work is laid out before us. You have long range plans for, for roofs, for, for uh, waistlines, for a lot of things. And, now, and we've got the contracts and the, everything in place. We should be able to perform at a very, very high level next year. And, and I, I would expect nothing less uh, from the team of professionals that we've assembled here. So with that, I, I would uh, address any comments or questions that you have. We don't uh, resident comments to the general manager would would generally not happen, but we could be flexible today. But that would come after the board comments. Or you could make an appointment to see me. Or you could. Well, <laughs> no. Okay. So there, there. Are just a few things. Uh, number one is we. Uh, Brad very often tells probably me, but maybe more than me, that we're the most demanding board of them all because we're such, we're so fanatical or so concerned. And I don't find that to be an insult because we really want to work very hard with him to try to get things done. Um, and we do pick on him sometimes without mercy and say, well, why did you do the boardroom? You shouldn't have done the boardroom. There's so much other stuff to do. Meanwhile, on the other side, is he has come in and fixed a number of our guard houses. I know he did it at gate 14 and updated it totally 
for what less than three hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, like twenty grand a piece. And, yeah. and the other the budget the other company was spending over a million dollars a guard a, one of the guard houses. So when you think of you know yeah maybe we we do some things but they're they're things that he's so really trying to address wasteful, how wasteful that was. You know, whenever I drive in and out my gate, I go, wow, look at this was like, it looks okay, it's up to date, it has all that it's need, and it didn't bleed the, bleed the community. So I think that's really great. So we want you to keep finding things like that that will save us money, okay? I have, I have three questions. Um, what do we do about the roofs of the parking structures? Did we ever talk about that? I never, I don't think we ever did, but you know, it's not the same as a home, but we should put that on, on our list. Yeah. You did say that um, you were gonna talk a little bit more about fires. And is, I know that Steve is, but because a number of residents were concerned uh, because of the, the fire situation in various parts of California. Well, it has been an eye opener, that's for sure. Um, we haven't seen fires rage through some of these areas ever and, and, and damage structures and oppose risk to life in ways that a few years back you wouldn't really imagine. And, and though we probably don't have the same kind of fuel load off-site, there is fuel out there and it will burn very quickly. And, and I think at times and places on our perimeter we have stuff that we've planted that could be a risk too. And so I, I think we need to think about. Well, you know, I, do you really I, want a bunch I of thought you were beyond thinking. Yes, we are beyond thinking. Okay, but There's... but now you get down to to various say eucalyptus, pine, acacia that you want to remove, and and there'll be certain residents who will say, well, gee, I, I love that big eucalyptus tree that's leaning over my manor and and right in the line of a potential brush fire, and we're just going to have to bite the bullet and take some of those out. So we'll, Bruce is going to be identifying a, a, a program and plan for you to, to target the most risky trees. You know, maybe start with the, the most unhealthy trees. There are a lot of them out there. You've seen, particularly along the perimeter over there, a lot of the sycamores are not doing very well. And so those are a good target for removal. And so, yeah, that's it. And then also, going after the owners of that land. They have a responsibility to provide a fire break, if you will, a fuel load modification themselves. And, and they've not done that and put the burden on us, and, and that's unfair. And so I think the Orange County Parks, uh, the fire district, we need to all let them know, hey, we're gonna do our part, but we expect adjacent property owners to do their part as well. So again, we're beyond thinking. Yeah, no, we're, Tim is sending letters out to that effect. Okay. Yes, all yes. Right, because we're- We're not we're, thinking, we're acting. Right, we're acting, okay. Yes. Better than not thinking, but still acting, we're acting. All right, so um, yes, John. I want to thank Brad and Lori for getting this easy pay form so I can hold it up and show our residents. If you fill this thing out, it will allow uh, the MSI to automatically raise your assessment to the new $28 amount, uh, $628 amount. And if you haven't filled one out, it's a good idea. And now you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. All right. So, yes. Okay. John, Bert, Bert. I, I, Shh. I, I really don't want to do this just to correct you. Uh, you you don't have to fill it out to cover the increase in assessment if if you are ready in the plan it's done automatically exactly so you don't yes. have to worry about that but if you if you haven't filled one out right if you're not in the plan it's a good idea okay so the money's taken from your checking account all bank. right so is that is that it all right so now we can move thank you very much i, I did want to want to end with again thanking this board but also the, the staff and the residents who volunteer and work with us we've had so much help um making this transition uh, residents have been great i meet with many of them every week um and uh we really do have uh a very engaged uh, and interested community. Maybe not so much in governance activities, but in terms of what's going on in their neighborhood, they're very engaged and they're very free to communicate uh, their thoughts and ideas and, and I thank them for that. That's, that's where uh, my inspiration comes from uh, oftentimes. So thank you. We thought we inspired you. Well, you 
<laughs> okay. In any case, thank you very much, Brad. And now we are going to move over to item 11, which is the consent calendar. Well, we need a motion, a second, and then you can comment. So we have a motion by Steve, seconded by Bert. And if Bert, or do you have anything that you want to address as the motion maker and the seconder? You go first. Okay, now, any discussion on the consent calendar? Yes, Bunny. Because we're not a rubber stamp mutual. <laughs> And, uh, but the only thing I, I read all the resolutions and last uh, meeting we talked about including in the resolution that we have done the awareness forms, but they didn't put this in the resolutions this time. And so I just don't know if we need a board consensus that we would like to have that wording included in the future resolutions that we did uh, pro uh, provide awareness forms. Yeah, I think that direction is, has been given and maybe it hasn't been, you know, official, but or it hasn't been executed, but we understand what you want and we'll put it in there. Yeah, and we can add them to these too. It was supposed to be in there. My mic's not on. It's something that we did discuss and ask, ask for, so it should just should be in there so that it's not totally on automatic pilot, right? Okay, so we are now discussing the consent calendar, and I already gave you an opportunity to, met, to, to say anything about it. You just thought of something now? Uh, just to clarify, uh, under the Architecture Control and Standards Committee recommendations, okay, all of the items on that list are approved. There is no denial yeah. for clarity. They just really spell that out. Yes. Yeah, and that is a really good point because I uh, I look at it and I go, we have, because see, if you look at the landscape ones, it says approve, and then the other one says deny. So we have to put approve next to it on there. Sharon. We're gonna add that same feature on, on the consent. Okay. You asked for it very specifically on landscape. We should have just added it to that too. Wow, but, uh, I know. Okay, so um, all right, so we have to, yes, Steve, no, all right, no, okay. So are we doing hand voting now again? I don't know why we have the system. I want a refund, but a credit um, to our account. Okay, so we have the consent calendar. We have a motion, we have a second. We had not really any discussion to change it. So all those in favor of the consent calendar. Okay. It was unanimous, thank you. All right, so the next item on the list is unfinished business. Okay, so I, uh, who is going to um, do this? Is it you, Bert? Yes. All right. So these are four resolutions that are at the end of the 30-day uh, waiting period. They were introduced uh, at our last meeting, and now we are going to uh, vote to, to finalize them. And uh, I did go over these at the last meeting. I will just go over some of these briefly because they're quite involved, but you can read the complete uh, policy in your agenda. So this is golf cart policies. Whereas the third Laguna Hills Mutual Board desires to set golf cart policies and procedures, including decals, RFIDs, fines, Whereas residents are required to register golf carts, whereas electric golf carts plugged into common area electricity must pay 
the current annual golf, golf cart charging fee, whereas registration includes application of a golf cart reflective tamper-resistant decal, which must be visible at all times, whereas should a golf cart leave the community on any of the various golf cart paths provided within the city of Laguna Woods, member must obtain a RFID sticker after paying the required fee, whereas the golf cart decal and RFID remain the property of GRF, and whereas Third Mutual has concerns about properly maintained golf carts, unattended extension cords, and golf cart charges that are not positioned at least six inches above the floor, now therefore be it resolved on December 19, 2017, that the following amendments are made to the golf cart section of the Laguna Woods Village vehicle traffic and parking rules. So these are outlined here. I guess they're going to be, every golf cart will require a decal, but they'll be free, at least just for the golf cart. And uh, those that are plugged into private power will have a green uh, decal, and that's not going to require any fee, any extra fee. And golf carts that are gas operated, again, don't require an extra fee, but they get a red decal. And golf carts plugged into the common area then need to get a rectangular orange one and, and pay the fee because you're using common electricity. Excuse me. And there are other uh, requirements that are outlined here. But what's important is unattended extension cords may not be used in third mutual for any purpose. All golf cart battery charges must be elevated a minimum of six inches off the floor. And there are a series of fees and fines related to these. And resolve further residents found with unattended extension cords and or golf cart charges that not, are not a minimum of six inches above the floor will be subject to fines. Resolve further that resolution 031776 approved on July 18, 2017 and 0317-99, approved on September 19th, 2017, is hereby superseded and canceled and resolved further that the offices and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move, it was moved previously, so. Second. Okay, so. Do we, we need a, have a vote? If there's no discussion, do I have any discussion on this? Uh, can we make a change from is to are? Are hereby superseded. Wh which one? Where is that? Uh, resolve further that res the two resolutions. Yeah, good point. We can do that. Okay. That's a scrivener's correction. Yeah, and any other Amen. comments? Uh, I would like to add one one comment that we should follow this up <clears throat> with uh, staff to make sure that the procedures for implementing this are are put into place and that they're what we think they should be and probably should review that, Lori. Uh, I think that should be a pretty standard thing that we all do. Uh, anyway, those are my comments. Can we have a vote? There's no further comments. All those in favor? Unanimous. Hey, Bert, go to the next one. Yes. This is plug-in electric vehicles. Whereas the board adopted an electric vehicle charging policy for plug-in electric vehicles, PEVs, to utilize 120 volt 
outlets in common areas, whereas residents are required to pay an annual prorated usage fee for every PEV registered to any unit that does not have a private garage or private charging station, and whereas a recommendation has been made to allow residents to opt out by signing a waiver if they don't plan on connecting to Third Laguna Hills Mutual Common Area Electricity. Now, therefore be it resolved on December 19, 2017, that the following amendments are made to the electric vehicle section of the Laguna Woods Village Vehicle Traffic and Parking Rules. And I'll just indicate a couple of one of them here. Non-resident and guest PEVs are prohibited from connecting to common area outlets. Any PEV connected to a common area outlet without authorization may be disconnected and or owner contacted by security staff in addition to the other enforcement actions allowed in these rules. Owners of PEVs are solely responsible for the proper use and maintenance of their vehicle and any associated equipment used in charging the vehicle and may not make any unauthorized alterization, alterations to mutual outlets, wiring, circuit breakers, or electric surface panels, resident PEVs of other types for example, battery, electric, and plug-in hybrid vehicles are allowed to connect to mutual common area electricity upon payment of the electricity user fee set by the mutual board and resident must properly display a mutual issued electric vehicle, EV decal, on the vehicle. And within the procedure is a picture of what the decal looked like. And the other point, there are other points here, but one to point out is PEVs are equipped with charging cords, which for the purpose of this policy are not extension cords. Unattended extension cords may not be used in third mutual for any purpose. Resolve further that Residents found with unattended extension cords will be subject to fines. Resolve further that resolution 031776, approved on July 18, 2017, and 031799, approved on September 19, 2017, is hereby superseded and canceled. And resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution I move. Second. Discussion? It's a grammatical same grammatical error. Okay. Instead of it, it should be R. Okay. Any further discussion? We'll take a vote then. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, we're up to 12. Thank you, Bill. We're up to 12C. Or yes. <clears throat> this is the lease authorization procedure. Whereas the board of directors of Third Hills, Third Laguna Hills Mutual, held a meeting on November 21st, 2017, in which a, a quorum of the board was present, whereas the board is obligated to manage and enforce the residency requirements for mutual members and other residents and tenants as set forth in the mutual's governing documents, including without limitation the mutual's declaration of covenant, covenants conditions and restri restrictions, CCNRs, bylaws, and operating rules. Whereas pursuant to its duties under the mutual's governing documents, the board is obligated to review lease applications 
for prospective leases between mutual members and their proposed tenants in accordance with the provisions of the bylaws, CCNRs, and operating rules, whereas the board adopted a lease authorization policy by resolution 031767 for the purposes of clarifying definitions, fees, charges, terms, and conditions, and implementing new procedures with an emphasis on certain select operating rules, which included a requirement that criminal background and credit checks must be submitted by members seeking authorization to lease their manor along with a copy of the lease agreement. Whereas the lease authorization policy has been in effect for approximately four months and the criminal background and credit check requirements under such policy have proven to be disruptive to the application process and administrative burden to the mutual and the subject of concern raised by a number of mutual members. And whereas the board has determined that it would be in the best interest of the mutual to modify some of the procedures and requirements in the lease authorization policy previously adopted by the board pursuant to resolution 071767, including the rescinding of the requirements of criminal background and credit checks so as to alleviate some of the issues and difficulties presented by such previously adopted procedures. Now, Therefore, be it resolved December 19, 2017, that the Board of the Mutual hereby approves and adopts the revised lease authorization procedure and application and resolve further that the staff is hereby directed to disseminate this information to the realty community serving Laguna Woods Village and resolve further that resolution 031767 and the prior version of the lease authorization policy adopted by such resolution are hereby superseded by this re resolution and the revised lease authorization policy adopted pursuant to this resolution and resolve further that the offices and agents of the mutual are hereby authorized on behalf of the mutual to carry out this resolution, I move. Second. Second. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you to ask a question? Sure. Seb, have, uh, no, it, it has to do with the leasing application. I might have just not heard it. So we have a motion. He moved. It was seconded. So now we could discuss it. Right. So but I believe that you should be asking members of the committee first or the board first. Well, I just wanted you to know that I had a question in case you didn't have okay, one. Okay, but then... Okay, that's first. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, on leases, uh, do we intend in the future to allow leases to go beyond one year? Uh, that's a very good question, Bert, because it gives me a chance to clarify a point that I think is really important. There's a difference between a lease and a lease application. And I think there's a lot of confusion about that. What you are required to do by this policy is file an application every year. But according to our CCNRs, you need to, uh, the minimum lease can be 60 days, but there is no maximum. So most actually of our leases are over a year. About 80% of them are. But if you have a long-term lease, you need to reapply every year because this gives us a chance to make sure that the same people are involved and it's the same lease and also that there has been no violations or fees or other issues involved with the owner of the manor. And what's also important for everyone to understand is un unlike United, we have leases or rent or landlords who are owners in this community and our relationship as the board is with the owner, not with the renters. We have no direct relationship to the renters. 
So the only way we can control the situation is by controlling the owner. And if the owner is negligent, and unfortunately we've come across this, they are subject to fines. And let me tell you, some of those fines can be very significant in the thousands of dollars because unfortunately there are renters in the community who have violated, grossly violated, a lot of our uh, regulations and rules and created really havoc. So it's really, and that, this is why we originally instituted the criminal background check, but we still recommend that landlords do this, particularly for new renters, people they haven't leased to before. Another question that I have would be on page 11. Excuse me, you're only allowed one question. Really? <laughs> <laughs> page, 11, page 11 of 28, uh, line number six. Okay, we stipulate that the manor together with the parking space assigned to such manor must be made available to the leasee during the entire term of the lease authorization. Yes. Does that limit the owner yes. from putting into the lease agreement Okay, uh, the ability where he may want to leave his vehicle and he has agreement by the leasee. That's that's not allowed. I mean, no. if they, I mean, we have no relationship with the leasee. Is that but correct? But we do with the owner. We do with the owner, and we can. Require, but that's a relationship that he is forming between him and the leasee. Well, but but let's go back to what we're saying to the owner. He can form any kind of agreement he wants, but the owner is required to vacate that spot. He's required to move out of the community. That is the whole idea. He gives up his manner. And that is why we uh, allow leasing, because the assessment is still being paid by the owner. And, you know, this is a really critical point. We so do. as term, under the terms of the rental, he has to move out of the uh, community. And he can, he's given a special ID, which allows him to come back and he can check on his property. But that is the limit of his right to this community. Unfortunately, we know that this has been abused, that there are people who are renting their manor but still come back and play golf. And that's a no-no. So we are trying to really enforce this. Now, I'm just thinking of those owners who are snowbirds. In other words, they own a unit. Uh, they're not here six months of the year. And they will rent their unit for the remaining six months. But they wish to leave their car. And if they can get a leasee who basically does not need a car or use a car, uh, it would seem to me that uh, if there's an agreement reached with his leasee, independent, uh, that uh, we're, we're res I could we can. That. It's an unreasonable restriction. The thing is, is that we do not allow it because what would happen is, first of all, when he's not living here, he should his his decals, his stuff would no longer be activated. When he becomes just the the owner and not a resident, his his parking things wouldn't be active, and we have to really be careful with that because I know some people who wanted to keep their car here and rent their unit out and then even though the renter says oh that I'm okay with it then they just take up other parking spaces which adds to our parking problem so that really is not allowed I checked into it because I found that somebody was trying to rent their unit and leave their car there so it, we can't allow it. Snowbirds, not snowbirds, whatever they are, they have to store their vehicle somewhere other than here, where, where we do have parking problems. So, okay. Uh, I, can I ask my question now then? Now, is it my turn? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, has this, because people stop me on the street, <laughs> have we resolved how much you have to pay for a lease application and for a renewal? Yeah, that, it's, in, it's, it's in, in there? Did I miss it? There. Okay. It's All 170, right. I believe, for the initial. And then and the renewal the is? The renewal is 110. I yes, think. so some people were like concerned that they thought the renewal was 160. So I said, don't worry, go in and apply and tell them you want to pay 110 and mention Bert's name. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> Just don't tell them I'll pay the difference. <laughs> okay. All right. So that is good. Uh, and we vote. So, and now we have to vote. Could I, we have, could a I have a question? And a sec oh, go ahead. Right ahead. Well, my question is uh, when the uh, owner leased uh, his or hers uh, uh, unit to the leases, then uh, leases have the right to use our facilities? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, but the owner cannot use at the right. same time. Right. Okay. He surrenders that right. Okay. Thank you. Which is why we. Which is why we tried to do this thing with the membership card because they would suddenly loot, you know, say, oh, I can't find it, you know, whatever. This is your third question, Bert. On the, on the fee schedule. On the fee schedule, do we not charge for an additional resident for third? Yes. Or is that strictly GRF? Yes. GR that's a, we do that's not have GRF. any charge? They, no. Yes, they pay that, yes. It's they have to I'm, pay. For additional resident, it, it, they have to pay for GRF. They, have, we, they pay that fee. We tried to work on that with uh, with legal, and it wasn't didn't. We tried to do it because we said, well, we should charge them for extra water consumption and extra trash, and extra it was put aside, right? So, well, no, people pay for their own electricity. Right. So we had so the charges had to be justifiable. I believe that United charges for it, but we were advised that we couldn't do it. But it's on our list of things that we still would like to work out with legal. All right. So now we have a motion. We have it seconded. We have a number of questions. All those in favor? Okay. Um, twelve. We're up to twelve D now. Yes. Now these are. What, 12D? Yeah. Okay, so we will move it then to new business. So we'll wait. Um, I have a question, though, on, on unfinished business or new business. Do we have to do anything to address that $25, that, sh that $100 that should be $25? You know, when we talked about earlier, the error in that, do we have to, what do we, do we have to? Do that at closed? What, what do we actually have to do with that? Well, it's not on the agenda, so it'll have to be on your January agenda. So we need to determine um, if that's something you want to put on. Well, it would be something that we have to put on, but how would we make it so that we don't allow, allow for the extra charging? So what, what we will ask staff to do effective immediately is to only charge the $25, even for le lessees. Is that correct? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Bert? I no. The, the idea for the lessees was, yeah, okay. that twenty five dollars. But if they don't return the card, then it's a hundred. Then it's a hundred. Okay. All right. So do we have to go back and reclarify what we have to do with staff, and then put it on? I, on I'm going to clarify that with Chris today. Okay. And then we're going to put it on your agenda to ratify it in January. Right. But we could do a temporary. A temporary. A, this is on the agenda. We we're not going to charge extra. Right. So we can do that. I mean, it's a little odd, but we could do that. As of now, as yes. of now. Yes. 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 They're giving That's staff direction today. Yeah. What so, about people who have already paid a hundred dollars? This past month, they've been paying. 100. Well, the thing is, is we will have to definitely look into that. Okay. All right, so we got that done. All right, thank you. So let's make sure we don't lose this one in the mess. All right, so now we're going to go over. So we're going to move 12D down to um, 13D. All right, is that okay? Because it should be new business. So we're finished with unfinished business. Let's do uh, new business, 13A. Who's, who, are you doing that, Bert, too? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, go ahead. All right. These are some general alteration standards. There were a series of them. Section one, whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, whereas the general requirements are and should remain the same for all alteration standards. 
and amending the general requirements requires amending every individual alteration standard, and whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to remove the general requirements from each individual alteration standard and create a new alteration standard for the general requirements, eliminating the need to revise all the alteration standards for revision to the general requirements. Now, therefore be it resolved, December 19, 2017, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduce the following standard, Section 1, for the general requirement of all alteration standards. 1.1. Permits and fees. A mutual permit is required for all alterations to the building. A City of Laguna Woods permit may be required. All fees for both mutual and city permits shall be paid but for by the member and or his or her contractor. Member and or his or her contractor must provide the Manor Alterations Office with city permit numbers prior to beginning work. 1.2, member's responsibility. The member is solely responsible for the maintenance, repair, and or removal of all alterations to the building. 1.3, codes and regulations. All work shall comply with all applicable local, state, and federal requirements including, but not limited to, the current edition of the National Electric Code. 1.4, work hours. No work shall commence prior to 7 a.m., and no work shall be permitted after 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. Work on Saturday shall be permitted from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for work which results in construction-related noise. For example, cutting, tile, hammering, and the use of power tools. For work that does not result in excessive noise, such as painting and carpet insta installation, per permitted hours are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. No work whatsoever shall be permitted on Sunday. No work shall be allowed on Sundays or holidays. Plans, that's 1.5. The member applying for a permit shall provide to the Manor Alterations Office a detailed plan or plans for approval. Indicate all work to be done, that is, size, location, description, and specification. Dump sites, 1.6. The premises shall be free of accumulation of waste material and all Rubbish caused by construction work, the member and his or her contractor are responsible for removal of debris and excess material and must leave work areas broom clean daily. Use of community dump sites for construction related dumping is not permitted. Contractors or members dumpsters, if required, must have location approved by the Manor Alteration Office. 1.7, contractor. Installation must be performed by a California licensed contractor of the appropriate trade. 1.8, contractor's conduct. Members, contractors, their personnel, and subcontractors shall refrain at all times from using profanity, abusive or lang loud language, and must wear shirts at all times. Radio, MP3, CD, or cassette players are not permitted on the project site. Con contractor personnel will at all times extend and exhibit a courteous demeanor to residents. Resolve further that the general requirements of all alteration standards will be modified to reflect the changes and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written, I move. Okay, any comments? Oh, I'm sorry. Any comments? Yes. Okay, good, because I have some too, but I'll wait. 
Okay. In, in terms of the holidays on 1.4, were we going to specify what particular holidays might be an exception? As we ran into some issues with, um, wasn't it President's Day and, and uh, so forth, so we were going to stipulate like Christmas and, and so forth was definitely a no work day, but other days might allow something. Certainly. The moment you, you list holidays, if we suddenly decide to add a holiday, okay, then we have to go back and revise this standard. By just generically, basically stating holidays, we do have other policies with regard to ho what holidays we are, are okay. apply. I mean, the reason that this resolution has come into being is we realized that any change, that this used to appear in every one of our standards as part of the standards. So that if you change the hours of work, you would have had to go back and change every standard that we had to, to modify that one section. And that's the reason why we pulled that completely out of all of the standards and let it go as a standalone. And now what happens is all of the other standards just refer to this one standard. OK. Anybody, anyone else? <coughs> yes, Steve. Oh, uh, yeah. On, um Page two of three on work hours, uh, paragraph 1.4. Uh, just reading through this, it looks like every day from seven to six and Saturday from nine to two, you can do any kind of work you want. And uh, I don't see where there are preemptive hours for uh, excessive noise or for non-excessive noise. Um, I think that's a really good point. And I thought, and forgive me, I thought that we said from 7 to 8, they could be on site. I thought our hours were from 7 to 8. They could be on site and be setting up and do quiet work. Yeah. And that it was 8 o'clock that they could, I mean, but, you know, I, so I think we really, really we have to have to clarify that. Um, because I don't believe it, they could start at seven. Because if they could start at seven, boom, boom, bang, bang, that means they're getting there at six o'clock screaming at one another about setting it up. So that needs to be clarified. Uh, but the other thing is, is so great question, Steve. Anything else, Steve? Yes, John. There exists a detailed list of which alterations require city permits. Shouldn't that, uh, should that list be an attachment to this uh, Policy. Well, that, but see that, I think if we just say approved city permits, because that, that, that might change, yeah. you know, that's another thing. I mean, because sometimes from one minute to the next, but that's a very good question. And we do have 30 days to look at this and make it better. Um, I don't know why. Okay, anybody else? Is it my turn? Okay, gosh. I don't know by 1.4. It says no works whatsoever shall be permitted on Sunday. No work shall be allowed on Sunday. Why are we redundant there? So it should be no work whatsoever shall be permitted on Sundays or I suggest VMS holidays. VM, so VMS would get in there. VMS. This, this whole paragraph's wrong. It's the old one, so it needs to be corrected, and it will be within the 30 days. I don't know what happened here. I apologize. Okay, so it's wrong. Okay, oh, the other thing I'm going to go back to, our next board meeting is um, the 19th, and this is the 16th. No, I think I have that reversed. Our next board meeting is the 16th. This is the 19th which means we wouldn't be able to get 30-day approval. Yeah, it so, goes to February. So it goes to February, or we can schedule an open meeting for alterations, so for, not alteration standards, for approval of resolutions. And uh, Cheryl, that's something that we generally do. We would we try to indicate that on here, because otherwise some of these then will go into February, and we might need them sooner. Mm -hmm. So we have to consider that. But I had some more. Excuse me. Shh. I had a few other questions. Number one, dump sites is our trash. But did any of you ever see people like leaving debris in the streets? Is that covered here? And they, they wash their paintbrushes out on the lawn and they leave white paint there. So is, is 
that covered in here where they, you know, where they can't use their dump sites, but that they can't leave stuff. You know, I see paint, debris. I mean, I have seen paint dripped in the streets. And I think we have to cover that in some way. Um, maybe it has to be dump sites and mess, I, you know, whatever, but I think it needs something. And then yeah, the, uh, the contractor must be licensed. Do they have to show proof of that when they do this? Um, I actually think that 1.6 is, is pretty broad and then it covers washing the paintbrushes and it any does? other debris. Yes. And it must leave work areas <coughs> room. So Excuse it's work. Me. So the, the lawn is a work area? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. It Repeat. just says premises. And so that's All really, right. that's really broad. So proof of contractor being. So again, what we repeatedly encourage everybody is that when they sign a contract and that they for sure have a contract that they check the contractor's license and not only <coughs> look at it, but go online and make okay. sure that it's and, good. And the other last one is on contractor's conduct. Aren't we going to put that they can't park? in visitor parking. That's our biggest thing. And their conduct, just like they shouldn't be running around without shirts on and screaming, they shouldn't be parking in visitor parking. That has to be part of our, however you want to write that, but because you can't say they can be put in assigned parking, because we don't have assigned parking, but they should not be in visitor parking. How? What is the wording for that? It's, it's, um no, no resident covered, no resident parking, be it covered, uncovered, or fire lanes. No. Or resident. handicap. Okay, it's so all where are them. they supposed to park? They're supposed to park on the street. Okay, well, we, Only. we should put, we have to put that, we have to put They that. have to find a street. That's actually, did I open And actually it? under certain, a cul-de-sac uh, is an impossibility. Well, okay, if, if you take uh, over in gates five and six and where the bridge is, all that is all a cul-de-sac area from Mariposa. And if you're working on building, what, 2389, you're looking at uh, at least a third of a mile. Yeah, but we had talked about, because even when we made this change with resident, with uh, employee parking, they could unload and, and then maybe you have to put something in there, so we're just asking it. They, maybe there's some areas where they have to be able to park a vehicle. Have you ever seen four or five? They, put, they all come and they well, park. I, I agree with that. So, I'm just so saying that, that has to be, so we have to figure out what is the right wording for vehicles. That's correct. So, so that's, so parking vehicles, that has to be, so I don't but know. We'll, don't, we'll get that worked out. It, that should not be in here. That should be on a case-by-case -case basis when they go th before ACSC. If ACSC wants to give them a parking spot in a residence spot, they could do it on that one-off, but it should not be general in here. Right. But the thing is, is it has to be mentioned in there. So you could say parking and then say, and put something that qualifies it. But if we don't mention parking as contractor's conduct, we don't have a, we don't have a chance in hell to get it worked out. All right. But it's so, I yes, have a, a question regarding the actual um, physical dumpsters that contractors use, those big things that they dump their trash in. Are there rules regarding that? Because they seem to be placed just wherever. And so I think we need to cover that specifically. Again, we have a condition of approval for that. And in the case where they want an outside dumpster only from waste management, who is the city provider, they. ACSC can condition them to have a special dumpster where ACSC says to put Who it. Who is ACSC? Architectural Control. Control. Oh, I'm yeah. Only, I there's, I a, there's a there's a blank condition for that and it can be put in on a on a one-off basis. It should not be general. Okay, but it it again, we say it should not be general, but it still has to be mentioned and then say qualifiers or something because sometimes I see the, these dumpsters in visitor parking. Right. That's really terrible. Okay, yes, Bill. Yeah, Lori, um, I have the impression that there is some documentation that, that directs contractors not to park in resident. And it's somewhat, you know, 
And then the question comes, should it be in this general? I don't or? think it should be here. I think it should be in the conditions of approval. It's also on their permit. It's on the flyer they get at the gate. Right. It also should be mentioned here that okay. just says approved parking. Just don't let it go because they'll say they never heard it. Okay. Because if they get it and it's conditions at the gate, nobody pays attention to it anyway. Doesn't so, hurt to tell them multiple times, so we'll put right. it in here. So um, for clarification, um, this is going to move forward for 30 days with all of these changes in it. <coughs> yeah. Is this going to postpone it, or are we going to be able to make these changes uh, and, and, and vote on it sometime after the 16th of January? Correct. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Because these are all rules that we have somewhere else. We're just putting them in here as well. So it's nothing new. It's already all been voted on by you, all of you. We just have to make sure that the latest rules are here. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, all right. Well, yes. Uh, along those lines, I have had several instances where I've called in that the dumpster has been put on the street and it is not marked. There are no reflectors, no cones. Right. And I think we've really got to clamp down on that. So when you, it is see those, when you see those, you should be reporting them to compliance and security. I, I have, and I'm not sure what has happened. Nothing. Lots of times. Yeah, that's, that's actually a safety hazard, and we need to take care yes. of those ASAP. Yeah. That would be a good article for the newsletter. <laughs> okay. All right. And so are we done with this one? Can we? So do we have to vote on this? We have to vote on we. No, 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 we don't vote on it. This is just to review it. Okay. We, we vote on it in 30 days. Okay, go ahead, Bert. Okay, so I'm up to 13B. Yep. Whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, and whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standard section four, air conditioning units, heat pumps, and now therefore be it resolved, December 19th, I think that date will be changed, that the board of directors of this corporation hereby introduces the removal of section 2.4 and revises the following sections of standard section 4. So this is 2.9, removal of sleeves in stucco walls. A, removal of sleeves in multi-story buildings is prohibited. B, removal of sleeves in stucco walls of single-story buildings shall be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. A variance may be required. C, when permitted, removal of sleeves in stucco walls require that the patch be made in accordance with standard construction practices to maintain the waterproof integrity of the wall. The texture and color must match the existing wall. Resolve further that the general requirements of all alteration standards will be modified to reflect the changes and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written, I move. Second. Uh, any comments? Any discussion? Just, just, just a brief comment. You're going to see a lot of these over the next several months as the Architect Control Committee is revamping all of our standards, which have not been brought up to date for some time. And so what we're doing is we're selecting five or six standards for each meeting, and we're going through and revising those standards, and that's where they're appearing now. You so, just want to keep me busy, Bert. Okay. Well, <laughs> so you find, you know, these standards are old. Yeah. And uh, need revision. So, yes, Steve. Could you define what a sleeve is for yes. people who don't know? Yes, uh, that was my question. There should, Laurie, there should be a definition of what a sleeve is. In well, this, uh, in your air conditioner goes through the wall, okay? And surrounding that, you need a sleeve. 
for that air conditioner to slide See, in. See, now, but, isn't, aren't we glad we asked? Because I thought a sleeve was, you know, when they run the the cables or whatever it is up and down the wall, and they put a plastic thing yeah. over Because that could looks be that like too. it would be a it's sleeve. A yeah, it could That's be a that. chase. Yeah. A chase. That's a chase. I, well, chase I think sleeve. it would looks like a sleeve. A so sleeve. we and cannot assume that everyone was an engineer. Some of us were chefs, doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs. We and were, teachers. And teachers. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a piece so. of conduit, and usually in the rafter, in the... Um, studs that they cover up and you can run all the wires through it. Yeah, yeah so that's not a sleeve. No. That's, that's a, a sleeve. No. The purpose of this is, is for appearance sake on a building. Right. Right. So that's why, so what is that thing called where the cables chase. go? A chase. Chase. Mm -hmm. A chase. Exactly. Don't get that mixed up. External chase. An external chase versus an internal chase. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question though. All right, so now we have pages four and five and all this other stuff, and it's the same thing. They have the wrong work hours and everything. So is so when we attach stuff, it has to be correct. No, don't have it. That's been what do you mean it's been removed? It's in. No, if you look at page thirteen B. It should not be here. Well, yeah, this is. Yeah, they just showed you the current policy. They're going to be changing. Okay, it. so we shouldn't have these in here, and to put the right one in. Okay, so we have. We don't vote on this. No. It's going to be at our. It's a Thirty days. At Thirty days. Okay. Next, Bert. Okay. Hi. Thirteen C. Whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, and whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standards section six, block walls. Now, therefore be it resolved it's not today's date, that the board of directors of this corporation hereby introduces the following section of standard section six. 2.7, all walls built shall be constructed within the approved patio dimensions. Patio slabs shall not be extended without written approval of the board. All walls shall be constructed on appropriate footing. Planting areas between the wall and slab are acceptable. Resolve further that the general requirements of all alteration standards will be modified to reflect the changes and resolve further that the offices and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written, I move. Any discussion? Okay, I have two questions. Yes. I, I do not like or approve of the appropriate footings. Appropriate seems to be vague, appropriate. You're acting in an inappropriate manner. It doesn't seem to be something like footings would seem that it would need a better, stronger, more engineering kind of word than appropriate. Appropriate has to do with conduct, or you know, you wouldn't say the condiments are appropriate. So it just seems like an odd word. And the other thing is, what does planting areas between the wall and slab are acceptable mean? Okay, first of all, appropriate. Uh, if the re alteration request was for a wall, period, okay? That would require one type of footing. If indeed that wall was going in and on top of that wall there was going to be a structure, okay? You may require a different footing, okay? And so what we're saying here is the decision would be that to be made by staff and by the committee. Well, I just, I'm just asking if there's a word, an engineering type word that's better than appropriate. If you think that that's the best word you could ever find, then leave it. But what about the I, planting areas? Um, that says basically that if somebody has a patio 
and they wished indeed to have plantings within the bounds of that patio, uh, that they can have that, that planting area. That is their prerogative. They are planting, they can have the planting area for plants or for the patio? For plants. Yeah. Well, see, I don't think it says that. I think it says there is planting areas between, I read this as now, uh oh, now Bert's given the planting areas away. Right, so well, I may have no. little faith. Not at all. Yeah, this I think. Then the I, and the wall. So you think it's clear? Yeah. Yeah. It's clear? I actually think that both of them should say as approved by ACSC or staff. So it's appropriately approved footings and landscape approved by the village or staff or ACSC or whatever. See, I would just say on approved footings as opposed to appropriate. That would just like settle it. And yeah. Jules. I just have another slight problem, and that is I don't know how you can go between a wall and a slab when the two of them are perpendicular. No, they're not. You can yeah, they are. So basically remove a portion of the slab. There's a, a border between or wall and the patio. Yeah. So, it, so it should say planting in areas. That's really You're planting in areas. It's yeah. not. I mean, there, there are manors today where you have a wall, and inside that wall, okay, there's a planting area. Mm -hmm. And then you have the patio. That's not and then you have the patio. And it should say but that's not between the wall and the slab. It inside. It's it is just indeed simply the inside the, the patio. No, it's between the wall and the slab. Yeah. Okay, so I have I, Ernesto's texting. I'll take you out and show you a number of buildings that have that. Yeah. So Ernesto's texting me, and what he's recommending here is that it says, all walls shall be constructed on structurally adequate footings, and that planting areas between the wall and slab are permitted upon approval. It shouldn't say acceptable. That's too vague as well. Well, <laughs> leave it alone. No, you're not. Structurally <laughs> got it. Okay, so we have a few little edits. Yes, John. Uh, Bert, we discussed with Kurt yesterday that a, a pat an existing patio slab without any vertical element will not be allowed to put any walls in. In other words, you can't in enhance an existing flat slab. Period. Right. It's just a slab. Okay. Yeah. And should that be in here? I don't know. Well, we'll, you, we'll, have we'll to to you have 30 days to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> and get, it, get a new one to the board. All right. So now we're going to um, move. Um, third, 12D is moved to 13D. So, Bert. Okay, so this is 13D now. But I'm reading from page item 12D, page 6 or 6. Whereas the board, whereas the board created a Garden Villas Breezeway Task Force to outline a communications program for the renovation of the building's walkways. Whereas the renovation program includes replacement of the carpeted areas in the Garden Villa breezeways, recessed areas with concrete to match the existing walkways. Whereas Garden Villa's breezeway task force has recommended adoption of the care and maintenance of patios, balconies, breezeways, and walkways in three-story buildings policy to include specific language regarding personal items in the newly renovated buildings. Now, therefore be it resolved, February 20th, 2018, that the board of directors of this corporation hereby adopts the care and maintenance of patios, balconies, breezeways and walkways in three-story buildings policy as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and resolve further that this policy applies to garden villa buildings that have been renovated 
and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written, I move. Second. We have a second. If we have no second, we, yes. we can't. Yes. Okay, we have a second. And does the motioner or the seconder have anything to say? No? Okay. No. Any comments from the board? Okay. On the microphone. Uh, second paragraph. It basically says that um, the carpet areas in the Garden Villa Breezeways recessed areas with concrete to match existing walkways. Actually, it's with concrete. Uh, that will be filled, however, it should be worded or to be level with the existing walkways <clears throat> and uh, color coded to designate exclusive common area of personal and social areas. That's one area that has to be reworded. And then when you come down to now, therefore, be it resolved, I think that should say January 20th, not. Not February. Well, no, January no, 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 20 30 days. is in 30 days. That's okay. the problem. So we may have a special meeting. But the next regular meeting of our board is 16. less than 30 days. So we have to have it, would have the February board meeting. That's why that was put in. Okay, but can we have a special meeting? We can't wait till February. <laughs> well. To, to if, distribute if it. we the board had determined to have um, a meeting where we're going, you know, we could have an open board okay. meeting where one of the topics on it is approval of what are these Resources. resolutions. Okay, uh, but we have to make sure some of our board members are on vacation, so we want we have to be sure that we have a quorum if we're if we're going to have a board meeting regarding these. So we have to work that out. But okay. I, I agree. Okay. We leave the 20th. You had a comment. I do have a comment. Uh, putting the word concrete in there acts like it precludes using other decking material. And since Bert solicited in the Globe uh, the uh, asking residents who have backgrounds in architecture and construction, um, I think that we want to we want to look at some other materials that we might want to use to replace the carpeting in those. And so, by by, I don't want to lock us into just concrete. I don't at this moment have an idea of what you would use. I know staff has gone out and used it's has brought forth things like. Uh, rubber rubber material and things like that but i th i truly think if we if we put ourselves into the into the situation where we've got, that we've got to use concrete in these and without looking more deeply into some other alternatives because this concrete solution is is quite expensive and we want to look at i think we still need to be open to the fact down the road and i'm not saying that for these three buildings that are currently her have pilot. been turning, you know, are per currently in 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 the in the pipeline. But I think we need to we need to be open enough to other materials that may be less expensive than the concrete. So, what is your recommended? Uh, Why don't we just be filled or something like that. Yeah. Recess areas to be filled to match existing walk walkways. Could you, uh, Lori? Could you ask Ernesto to fix that up, and then we'll. All right. Thank. Good. Very good point, Bill. Because as you know, we're doing our pilot, and then and then after the pilot, you're going to be able to say, "I would, maybe we should. We Look let let things. us. We can. Uh, I'm going to hit myself on the head. <laughs> Whatever. So so okay. You're right. So we'll, we're asking for some better or some um, leaving it open clarif clarification. All right. So we are now. Done with unfinished business, new business. We know that we're also having to address the $100 for the $25 versus the $100 in there. So now we're going to do a committee reports. And it's 1132. So please make your committee report as concise and as possible. So the first committee report is finance. Go ahead, Steve. First slide, please. 
total revenue for third mutual through October 31st, 2017 was 27,710,000 compared to expenses of 23,368,000, resulting in more revenue than expense by 4,342,000. Slide two, please. <clears throat> now we see that those same results with a distinction between operating and funds. This chart shows how much of the revenue went into operations with 15,342,000 coming in from assessments and $880,000 coming in from non-assessment revenue. This is compared to operating expenditures of 16,216,000. After backing out depreciation, which is not funded through operations, we can see at the bottom line, we had an operating surplus of $132,000 as of the reporting period. Slide three, please. Okay, onto the chart. This chart shows how much of our revenue went into our reserve funds and the amount expended to date. Slide four, please. Through October, third was better than budgeted by $2,565,000, primarily due to fewer outside services in reserve programs. Building structure replacement started in August and the vendor has not yet billed for all of the completed work. Item two. Uh, back, please. There we go. Wasteline replacement started in July. Item three, uh, water lines. And uh, its copper remediation program started later than expected in November 17. And finally, roof, repl roof replacement started in May and will, will be completed by the end of the year. Slide five, please. On this pie chart, we show operating expenses to date of $16.2 million by category, showing that our latest categories of largest categories of, experience, of expense are for compensation and utilities. Slide six, please. The reserve balances on October 31st, 2017 were nearly $29 million. To date, contributions to reserves, including assessments and interest earnings, totaled just under $11.5 million, and expenditures to date totaled just over $7 million. Additionally, fund transfers from operating surpluses totaled $409,000 as approved by the board in June via resolution 031769. Uh, take off the slide, please. Just mentioned that uh, we have been very proactive in dealing with delinquencies and unpaid assessments. And to date, that totals less than 1% of our total budget. We are taking uh, a lot of steps forward judicially to uh, take care of these uh, unpaid assessments and fees and to look forward to uh, reducing that even farther. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, monthly resale report. I'm happy to report that in November, there were uh, 86 sales. Last year was 88, but we're coming up. And uh, total sales volume, volume in all mutuals uh, last year was 271,000 this year, or excuse me, 271 million dollars compared to this year of 293.9 million. On to third specifically, we had 49 units sold during the month of November compared to 43 from last year. And uh, average resale prices are up 13.1% from $344,500 to an average of $389,500. I'm, I'm sorry, Steve. How many did you say we had in, we have in December? In uh, November? November. 49 were sold this year compared to 43 last year. Okay. That's very good. So okay. year to date, we are? Up 13.1% in the average cost. In, in cost, but yeah. in... Um, Sales were up almost 1%. Correct. Okay, monthly uh, leasing report, uh, we are standing at 27.14% of uh, leases for our 6102 units. I'd just like to say uh, in closing here that uh, as of a week ago, on the uh, list that the real estate uh, folks use, we had 90 available on the market, 54 were under contract or getting ready to close, that left 36 on the open market. 
which is 2% of uh, our total amount that we have uh, in here of 6,102 units. So I think we're looking pretty good on that to date. And some people have, um, our leasing is holding at that 27%. Correct. It's been ha that, you, you looked that up, or Bert looked it up, and it's yeah. been 27%, which we always worry about, yeah. but for, how, for a number of years. It fluctuates in the 27 percentile, between 27 and 28. Okay, so it's, all right. So thank you very much, Steve. All right, so the next person to report is the, he's already reported enough. I was going to say, architectural control you, you, you pretty well when you, when you look at the consent calendar and uh, what has just been approved by the, or at least looked at uh, with regard to standards modifications, uh, pretty much describes what the architect control and standards committee has accomplished this past month. So that's all I and need to report. And all staying within our non-use of common area rules and regulations. That is correct. I just want to be sure that we reiterate that. Okay, report of the MNC committee, Dr. Moldau. <laughs> You're a doctor. Um, the MNC committee did not meet this past year, however. This past year? No, uh, this, this past, past month. month. <laughs> it, it meets next month. Um, we did have meetings uh, with subcommittees and I'll ask uh, John to report on those meetings. And you're going to start meeting monthly, is that yes, correct? Yes, so starting in January, we're reverting back to a monthly because of the, num the amount of work that's really being done by the committee and by, by the staff. So the meeting should be shorter? Yes, we've been sort of running way, way over. Okay, yeah. all right, so good. We Thanks. have alluded to uh, some of the issues that are of major concern here in the village, and I'm going to talk about the dry rot committee and uh, the dry rot consultant that we have brought on board. A primary focus of the third board for the past several years has been the development of a program approach to resolution of the dry rot issue that, as a consequence, must, as a consequence of moisture intrusion, has impacted our manners. The moisture intrusion, a consequence of climate in Southern California, and the fact that our village was constructed in the 60s and 70s, causes some portion of the wood in our buildings to deteriorate. We instructed staff <clears throat> during, to bring a consultant on board to evaluate these conditions and receive a preliminary report based upon their discussions. The consultant, uh, and we received a preliminary report uh, the other day. The consultant will undertake a detailed analysis of 20 buildings selected by staff as representative of 50% of the manors here in Laguna Woods and representative of the total dry rot circumstance in Laguna Woods. The scoping will be non-destructive, will not require removal of stucco, and will begin on January 3rd. And the manors will be given notice before entry into uh, their unit if necessary. The consultants, and now here's what he's going to do. The consultant will continue to keep the MNC committee and staff current on their efforts as they, will, as they investigate and prepare construction documents to remedy, to remedy the existing dry rot conditions. Upon conclusion of this effort by March of, this, of next year, repair contracts will be awarded for approximately a year's worth of effort, construction repair effort required on the 20 buildings. The construction costs are not included in the consultant contract. The total cost, the total cost of the repair effort undertaken at this time, will enable staff and the consultant to prepare, to, to project, based on the cost of the selected 20 buildings, a projected cost for the entire dry rot here in Laguna Woods Village. Our dry rot. <clears throat> and this is the uh, very important paragraph. Our dry rot repairs in Laguna Wood Manors have been continually undertaken in the past years with the prior to paint program. With the above information from the consultant in hand, third MNC will be, then be able to address the requirement for the resources, requirement for the resources for 100% completion of the effort for a much needed dry rot program. So I, I, in closing, I'd like to... Uh, on an expedited basis. In closing, I'd like to emphasize our number one priority is, of course, the safety of our residents, and the board has taken action to identify and eliminate dry rot to protect members and investment of, of lives. 
and uh, then the parking task force. Uh, we, we, we have this, um, we, we brought a consultant in to analyze the parking and uh, uh, safety throughout, and his recommendation after a, 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 a preparing an analysis of, of our parking and safety, uh, his recommendation was to uh, reset and uh, re reset the red curves, and we did that with uh, sandblasting, and 100% and, uh, of the um, of the sandblasting and red curve reset has been completed uh, early in December. Now there may be some red curve that, that maybe have to be reinstalled as a consequence of safety. And finally, I want to. I've been asked to talk about the, the the objectives of the Garden Villa Golf Cart Garden Villa Golf Cart Task Force, and. Um, Basically, the purpose of the task force is resolution of golf cart capacity issues in the Garden, uh, in the Garden Villa garages and the uh, LH21 carports, uh, addressing availability and demand and assignment. Uh, do we number the spaces? Do, do we involve security? <coughs> and of course, every space needs access to uh, 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 electric electricity for plugging in. Um, John, yes. now that we, I have a question, now that we have removed a lot of the red curb, and we've also added some red curb, where uh, so that the trash could, could, could get picked up better, you know, and or the, or the mail cart could not have to park in the middle of the mail truck in the middle of the street. So I've seen some added, but it, I have gone to uh, a number of areas where there was. I know on the 4005, 4006, the entire street was painted red, and you could never park. And now it has been removed from certain areas, and so there. So it's great to see. Will you be with your committee working on other uh, avenues of parking improvement in the in the fu next in the future? I would hope so. Yes. Well, we we do know that we do have some. Uh, Challenge areas. This is some parking conundrums, if you will, and that's of course in the wedding cake where there's inadequate parking. And of course, down by Clubhouse 4, there are a large number of manors, I think about 20 of them, 23 story buildings in a very small area. And uh, so, yes, the parking task force does need to meet and address. Well, what are we going to do about these? these areas? Okay, so we're going to continue to. Uh, I take my with the direction, of course, from the leader of MNC because okay. the, 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 the parking committee has. Uh, All right. So, um, <coughs> yes. I just wanted to clarify, <clears throat> excuse me, two things. One is in these resolutions that we talked about today, and they talk about the golf cart fee, but it doesn't mention what the fee is and how that's handled. Do you, can you tell me that? Well, I thought we When had you the, register your golf, everyone has to register a golf cart. Does he pay a fee when he registers? I thought we had a special committee to address well, that. Well, we, Bert, it's a good question, but what, what staff wanted to do is to consolidate all of the fees into certain documents and make reference to them rather than putting fees specifically in a resolution. So every time the fees change, you don't have to go change that okay. resolution. So I, I don't expect that the, the Garden Villa uh, task for, golf cart task force will address uh, items other than availability, demand, and assignment. Okay. And numbering of spaces. All right, thank you. So now we have, thank you very much, John, for your continued work. Yes, our next report is our landscape committee, James. Thank you. Uh, well, everybody knows that uh, in the past several months, there were a lot of a complaint about the landscape maintenance and the fall behind the schedule. However, uh, since a couple of weeks ago, the things are improving. In fact, in the, the last uh, global, we began to see some compliments from our uh, from our residents. Now, the first slides I want to show you. In fact, in our uh, committee meeting, the staff Bruce showed us a, a, a large sequence of of those uh, 
spreadsheet, um, you know, uh, data. But I don't want to bore you with a bunch of those. I just want to show you one. This one says the upper part says the current tickets, request the tickets. You can see the red representing a certain mutual. This is in the month of November. And the blue is from United. And the bottom part, the red, again, that's the tickets being closed. You can see the majority tickets were closed in November. Um, we, you know, like three quarters, I mean, in our certain mutual, uh, only about one quarter in the United. That's why in the new tickets request um, by, by, by the, in the months of November, in, in the, uh, by certain mutual is a lot less because the, the problem being solved. So in the future, of course, this is a step in the right direction. We, with all those graphs, we can start to measure the accountability of our landscape divisions. Now, one of the key things, as I request, OK, well, we, we got to compare months to months how many open tickets has not been closed from months to next months. That will be a really measure the accountability. Of course, there are always complications. Maybe some of the tickets are a lot more complicated, harder to complete than the others. Well, we have to design a way of to readjust those things. Uh, that's all I want. I mean, that's the first one. First, I want to show. The second part is uh, as the as um, you know, uh, Brad indicated, Bruce indicated, we were short of a staff, one manager two supervisors. Now, they have hired one supervisor, so still one more supervisor and one manager. Uh, Bruce says uh, hopefully by the end of January, we, we, can, we can fulfill those. Uh, Brad, do you think that is doable? Yeah. So hopefully by then, we'll even more better organized. Now, uh, next point I want to make is uh, this is for people. I say the link is there. This is for the uh, Garden Villa Breeze Way area. Because of the high winds, so staff ask me, says, well, is it OK to use the sweepers, vacuum sweepers? I give them a permission for a limited time, maybe one week or two weeks. Blowers, yes, for one week or two weeks. So after that, you know, once they've done all those uh, bunch of leaves uh, that will stop. So, and I ask them, please send a notice to in, in the building or tell, inform the building captain so that people are aware of it. That's not ch policy change, just temporary. And, and then, of course, we have uh, many other projects we remain. For example, our, uh, our uh, soil sensor pilot project and also landscape division, the vision of 2018, landscape um, vision. Those will be covered in January committee meeting. And also, as everybody uh, asking, demand that since we have the our, uh, Arbor Pro software, so people like, we like to know, you know which tree should be how often they should be trimmed. So species sensitive trimming cycles, tree topping policies, and landscape manual updates, those will be complete in in the February committee meeting. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, James. And the next report is um, the report of the traffic hearings, is that going to be you, Director? No, it's going to be Director. I apologize. I left my notes at home <laughs> since I read that John was going to be giving the report. You said you were going upstairs to talk to them. OK, well. Um, I'll, I'll get them by the time we get upstairs. OK, well, we're, we're supposed to have this for the community on television, but uh, Next month, you'll have to do it twice. So, um, all right. So, our next uh, 
but we are going to have your next hearings on December 20th at 9 a.m. Is that correct? Tomorrow. That's well, tomorrow at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Is that correct? The 1 p.m. is Okay, well, so then at least we could update that on here. So the hearings are uh, the 20th at 9 a.m. in the boardroom. Is that correct? Okay, good. All right, next one is report of the communications committee. Well, we haven't had a meeting, but we've changed our schedule of meetings. It's going to be every other month again, but we're going to do it in the odd months rather than the evening months. So we, we will start in January. The time here is given, it's really, is, it's supposed to be 9.30 on January 8th. Unfortunately, that's going to create more conflict. So we will change for that week the date of the meeting and we will notify everyone. But from now on, it's going to be held <clears throat> on the second Monday of the uh, odd month, and it's going to be held in the afternoon at 1.30. Thank you. Okay. Well, the thing is, is that if we continue with M and C, is the M and C the second Monday? No. Bert? Bert? Yes. So it's, and M and C is going to go to every month, so it's going to be a conflict. So. We, no, I know, I, but we, I'm saying. We is uh, MNC in the morning? No, it's in the afternoon. Okay. But the president's, the president's meetings where the president and another officer all meet together is going to be the second Monday of every month. So So we'll have it in the morning. Well, no, we. No, I meant the, the uh, Communication. Yeah, but then the, I then not I, for the president. Yeah, but then the president and an officer of the board can't go to the communication meeting, so maybe no, we, it won't be held at the same time for this month. Okay. No, I don't mean for this month. I mean ongoing. We have to look at okay, the ongoing we'll work schedule. It out. All right. Then we'll so work when it is out. it going to be in January? It's not going to be, or it's going to be when? It's not. We'll have to schedule it. We'll let you know. Oh, so it's TBA. Yes. Okay. Good. Because. Communications is one of our the hottest issues in the community, so you have a lot. I know you have a lot to do. Well, as an aside, we're meeting <clears throat> tomorrow. The uh, we have, uh, I guess, an ad hoc committee about the newsletter. So we're going to meet tomorrow and discuss just what we want to put in the breeze. Okay. And, all right, so thank you very much, Bert. Um, the report of the Energy and Technology Committee, Bill. Yes, uh, we had a very productive meeting on December 5th. Um, I think, uh, and we decided at that meeting that we were going to change the date of our meeting from the first Tuesday of the month to the first Wednesday of the month, and we're changing the time to 1.30. And the reason we did this, there are a couple of reasons, um, is our meeting uh, was being held at the same time that the GR board meeting was going on. And the committee <clears throat> decided that it would really be really important to have somebody from the, from the GRF board attend these meetings because there's a lot of energy issues that go across the mutuals and including GRF. So we reached out to, um, to, the, uh, to Tom Circle uh, president of the board, and asked him to um, uh, ask the board if they had a somebody on the on the board that would like to join us on the first Wednesday um, uh, of the month for our, our energy committee meeting. And uh, Jim Juhan volunteered, so Jim is going to join us, and uh, hopefully we can when we discuss these energy issues uh, that are going on in the community that it. Uh, that message can be carried back to the GRF board. Um, we discussed um, getting a consultant uh, and what we're going to do when we acquire the streetlights. Um, and the staff said that they're still working on an RFP and working with the consultant and the contract uh, for taking over uh, the maintenance of uh, the street lights and consulting with us as we go through the process of acquiring them from Southern California Edison. So that process, that, <clears throat> that hopefully will be resolved in the February meeting and we, we can go forward with a contract on that. 
Um, we also talked about walkway lighting, and we had a consulting company that we've, we've engaged called U.S. Energy, and they went out and did a survey of the walkways in gates five and six that belong to third to have a look and see how many there were and what we might do to improve the lighting. They came back with a number of quotes, and this afternoon in the closed meeting, we're going to talk about that. It's not on the agenda, but I'm going to put it, I asked to have it put on there. We're going to talk about possibly going out for, for bids on that, um, on that contract. But it was really promising. The quotes were, were, were not as onerous as I thought that they might be. So it looks like uh, it's something that's going to be doable for the, for the committee. And uh, lastly, um, I think I have one more thing here. Um, we're going to, we're still looking at, uh, and we're kind of bouncing this back and forth between two committees, and that's the coin-operated dryers uh, for our laundry rooms. And um, we, at the meeting, um, sent this back to staff saying, before we make any commitments to this, we really need to see a schedule to see how much, how this work is going to be performed and, and, and what kind of time frame it's going to be done and how quickly it can be done. So that's still an ongoing going process, both for maintenance and construction and for the Energy Committee. So uh, at this point, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, I just have a question, Bill. So the next meeting of the Energy and Technology Committee is February 7th. Is it at 9.30 or is that 1? It is at 1.30. 1.30. That didn't get corrected in here, but... Okay. Uh, All right. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew. So so that's a Wednesday at 1.30 in the Cypress Room. Mm -hmm. That's and right. And the reason why you're doing that is because this is the only uh, board who has an energy committee and you wanted to make sure that you uh, afforded the opportunity for both United and GRF to join you. Yes, and United uh, has Steve Leonard as an advisor, and Jim's going to join us from the GR board. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, the report of the Water Committee, Doctor, Doctor, Director. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, well, first thing is I want to show you a map. Currently active is the El Tor Water is doing the second phase um, recycle water expansion project, and now. As far as our community is concerned, as you can see from this map, the yellow colored area is our gate and eye area. That's what um, the uh, El Toro War is working on. If you live in the gate and eye area, you probably already experienced the, the digging the, the, the street holes uh, for, you know, for, for those pipe, bearing pipes. Also, the green area is uh, gate five and six area. That's probably majority is belongs to United, but a little bit belongs to certain mutual. So uh, all the purple area, you can see that that's our, uh, that's our community, you know, certain mutual uh, gated seven, eight, 10, uh, all already on five and six already have the recycle water for the irrigation. So we're kind of lucky. So hopefully this uh, um, uh, second phase uh, of expansion project will be done some sometime later next year. So then we we have a little bit less high tier water to worry about because uh, recycled water do not have any high tiers, just a one tier. Uh, <clears throat> and then the second part is next slides is we are we're still tracking, tracking the monthly high tier water bill. As you can see in the, near the bottom, second to the bottom, September. And we kind of improved from the August. As you can see, the August is kind of hot weather. But the October, I, I'm questioning the, the, uh, the quantity. Well, now I don't know what happened in the outdoor water. They send a, a water bill. It's a so, the numbers are so bizarre. They have to revise second as a second time. But I look at the second time, those numbers still bizarre. So I'm questioning their, their accuracy uh, of El Toro water. Now, uh, you know, the, 
two years ago or three years ago, most high tier water came from a residential area. So that's where we started our project and uh, work on like, for example, old toilet, leaking toilet, under slab leaking. Now you can see in general, so for a residential area, down to sometimes less than $2,000 higher tier bill. However, I don't understand is uh, the uh, irrigation part pick up a lot of uh, uh, high tiers. So I'm going to have to work on with Raul uh, Brad. Uh, there must be the irrigation pipes leaking. We got to concentrate on those to reduce those high tier water. And uh, as far as the residential part, there's a few quick points I, I want to make is, uh, for example, the, uh, the house at a 5175. That's a really troublesome house. We, I know they have a compliance department to work on this house. Um, they, they owe us money, come to, I mean, the community fees. Hmm? It's closed. We can't, we shouldn't discuss it. Okay, well, but I think this, this, this one, uh, they, they really, we, the staff checking many times, there's no leaking. So we got to work, continue work on this, this uh, uh, unit. And then the other thing is uh, building 2244, you always have a higher tier water. And again, the staff checking, there's no leaking. We check that there's no leaking. And but because of some residents were spend a lot of water on pl water in their plants. Now this month, finally, I guess they, because we threw them in a, send them a letter, the, uh, the high tier bill was uh, re drastically reduced. We're glad that happened. And uh, of course, the building 3137 staff fixed uh, the under slab leaking. So next month, there shouldn't be any high tier waters. Um, Okay, that's all I have okay. for the water conservation. Um, thank you very much, James. So, um, and the, let, the next is a Bert Baum report of the Resident Policy and Compliance Task Force. This will be easy. We didn't have a meeting. We will schedule one in January, and we are going to deal with co-occupants, another one of our favorite topics. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now, uh, GRF committee highlights. At this part of the meeting, you are just supposed to uh, report if you had, if there were, you attended a meeting from any one of these committees in the past month and report what happened. So, CAC, anything? Jules, no meeting? Yes? Uh, there was a meeting and there was a lot that happened. And in the meantime, I have transferred everything from my old iPad to my new one. And they're all on the old iPad. Okay. All right. Uh, so because of that, you're never going to get off that committee. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm very active on that. I know you are. Okay. And there will be another meeting on January 11th. All right. Uh, the Finance Committee. Right. Uh, the next meeting is tomorrow. Uh, Bill and I will be attending. Uh, we're going to be going into depth on several things that uh, GRF is planning in the future. Um, also want to report that the treasurer's meeting is going to be in mid-January for myself, treasurers of GRF and United. Uh, we're in the process of scheduling that right now, but we are going to do that. Excellent. Okay. And thank you, Bill, for replacing me tomorrow. Uh, landscape meeting, the next meeting. Oh, was there anything to report? No? No, because they didn't have a okay. meeting. So the next meeting will be in January 18th. MNC, no meeting? Or actually, did you leave your actually, stuff on Jules' computer? There was a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we did learn, for one thing, uh, about the Performing Arts Center, that their committee is meeting to determine the requirements for the renovation of that building. But uh, we did learn that in advance of that, uh, there is an ongoing structural evaluation for all of the GRF buildings so that we can determine whether or not there's some more important work that has to be done before we go ahead and modify or, or uh, renovate the Performing Arts Center. Uh, 
so that we have enough money to do what has to be done. Right, and in, in any case, the Performing Arts Center was only supposed to really this year do life safety right. modifications. Right, exactly. Right, okay. okay. And there might be those in other buildings. Yep. All right. Um, so, so I got Bert. The next meeting. Yep. Oh, go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to ask you with it. Uh, I believe John Frankel and I are on that ad hoc committee for the for the Performing Arts Center. Yep. Uh, I haven't seen anything coming out from anybody. I don't know if John has or anything. No scheduled meeting notices? Okay, thank you. Um, I don't okay. know who the, um, Judith was the, I think Judith was the chair of that, but I don't know if it's any of that's been changed. Yeah, I don't know either. So you might want to. And uh, January 10th is their next meeting at 9 a.m., the boardroom. Okay, uh, media and communications, Bert. Actually, we met yesterday, and a few things happened. In terms of uh, most of the discussion was about our <coughs> TV, but not all of it. And uh, you might be interested in this because it might affect you. We have renewed the uh, contract with CBS. However, we haven't renewed it with Channel 5, KTLA. So I don't know where that is at the moment. It's in suspended. So it may be we may not have that channel. Uh, there's going to be a town hall <clears throat> on cable boxes on January 10th. I don't have any further information about time and place. I assume it's going to be in the boardroom. I don't know. Usually it's in the afternoon, but I'm not sure about I'm sure you'll be notified about that. Brad just said 4.30. 4.30? Okay. And you'll have overflow rooms available, I'm sure. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a new service. It's called Home, Whole Home DVR. This is a super-duper DVR that's going to make your current <laughs> one really look pale by comparison. <laughs> so it's going to be introduced in the, into the community. It's going to cost you a little more, but it's actually less expensive than what's available out there in other communities. So look forward to that. Uh, and also, we renewed the contract with uh, uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. So we're going to continue on that for another six months. We've gotten very good feedback on our Facebook uh, events so uh, that's where we are thank you okay thank you very much for uh, mobility and vehicles anything to report um, I would like to uh, highlight one thing but I'll cover it under disaster preparedness and uh, on 15 G I've uh, asked Brad if he would to cover the timetable and what's going on with gate access so Brad if you could do that Thank you. Um, obviously a very important project and, and uh, affects every resident's life every day, many times a day, and in a positive way. Um, a very complex project. For next year, we have eight installations planned. Whether we'll get to all those or not, it remains to be seen. We'll certainly get them all designed. And that's the first step. Each one of these is a very unique and distinct project not only in terms of the geometrics of the roadway and the access and where the, the orientation of the particular gatehouse, uh, but also the location of cameras, all those things vary. So you've got eight different designs that will be done uh, and then constructed, I suspect, in some logical sequence that will take advantage of the logistics and other opportunities uh, associated with uh, scheduling uh, such projects. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is award the the design engineering and management contract which is coming uh, to GRF at their next meeting. So we anticipate uh, that moving ahead and then uh, once we do a little work there, we'll be able to give you a good idea about what the logical sequence uh, of gates is and, and how that might affect uh, your residents in terms of not only uh, access to the community but, but also maybe a little extra emphasis on additional uh, RFIDs. So we still have uh, a few thousand cars that don't have the RFIDs, and so we want to give that a, a push as well. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you, Brad. 
Um, so I, I know I shouldn't really be doing this, but there's one resident who wanted to get up to the microphone, and we're allowed to have more resident comments. So um, I know that the disaster preparedness could take a long time, but yeah, it's, real quick. it's real quick. All right, so then she would go after the PAC before future agenda items. So I told her she could get up because she insists that she gets up. I bet you're gonna, you're gonna thank us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> in any case, um, so we have, uh, now we're up to 15H, is that correct? Disaster preparedness, yes, Steve. Okay, uh, first off, for all those involved in disaster preparedness, there won't be any meeting this month, there'll be another one next month. And uh, I wanna take a moment here, just to talk about uh, the latest initiative that Chief Moy has going for disaster preparedness, it's gonna help a lot of us. Uh, he's forming a partnership with the Orange County Healthcare Agency and their Health Disaster Management Division. And uh, what this means is we will be able to receive necessary medic medications through the city's readiness initiative. Uh, this, while he is doing this, he's also identifying special point of distribution locations within the village and the process to dispense them to our community. The uh, Health Disaster Management Division uh, coordinates the agency's emergency response functions related to all hazards planning, including bioterrorism, uh, pandemic influenza, national dis natural disasters, uh, and the community-wide emergency medical services systems for medical emergencies and other county health-related disasters. The overall goal of this is uh, for the city's readiness initiative program is to increase Orange County's capacity to dispense medications and medical supplies from the strategic national stockpiles during a countywide public health emergency. So this will really help us out uh, as we deal with these things in the future and have a plan to accommodate it. I, a, a number of residents has asked me, what are we, how are we prepared for any fire in the community? Can you comment on that? Sure. The, uh, the plan is built to accommodate any emergency. So fire is not specifically spelled out, even though there are things for the command center to deal with. So they have different scenarios for different things. But you aren't going to see it necessarily spelled out totally in the plan. But it has been accommodated. I talked to the chief about that. OK. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, and yes, our resident, please. Thank you for allowing me to come back to the mic. Uh, I've been listening to everything very attentively. And there are a couple of things, a few things I'd like to just ask about. Uh, you mentioned dry rot all the time, but nobody has mentioned termites. And I just had a very big uh, thing happen with termites, and it cost me over $1,000 of my own money to take down a patio cover and put it back up again so the termite thing could be uh, addressed. So I think termites are something that needs to be spoken about, not just. Uh, and also, you mentioned something about no wood. Is that a. a is that a, a product that is being used instead of wood? OK, well, okay. when you're finished, right. we'll have okay. you answer. Um, all right. Uh, fires. I'm in gate nine on the La Mesa, and we have that shrubland next to us, you know, the pr preserved area. Uh, and that, of course, could be a danger. Um, I want you to say something about Brad. He's always very, very positive in all of his reports. He never comes up with any problems. So I'm wondering, the staff changes, have all the openings been filled? What about the bus system that everybody is always commenting and complaining about? And also, for the, another thing, you mentioned something about a $28 fee. I don't know what that was about. There was something mentioned about a specific $28 fee for something. It went to six twenty-eight. Oh, okay. We'll answer you okay. at the end. And All right. finally, and the most important thing was the thing about the vehicle decals. That was not addressed. And well, that's, you know, I don't know 
how and why United and Third Mutual should be involved in something that should be just a GRF thing. Okay, so we have all of your questions. And I, the thing is about the, the decal fee, the fee, uh, Brad has to answer that because it's not up to us to be discuss it's going over that because that's a GRF thing. So we'll have to do that after the meeting. You can go to his office. But um, there are a few items that Bert Muldow could answer. And then also uh, Bill Walsh has an answer. Is that correct? Is that it? And three. All right. So go ahead, Bert. Unfortunately, I didn't take any notes as to. She, taught, she asked about what are we doing about termites. Okay. So I, I termites are being addressed the same way dry rot is being yeah, addressed. But uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, for, for the buildings also, the termites are addressed when we, we tent buildings. Uh, it's, and I'm, I could just add to that. The thing is, is that in the past, for many, many years, we always had a termite program Correct. where we went it's in ongoing. and tented the buildings and they an investigation was done etc and then the residents were notified the basic thing is is we never had a proactive or even reactive plan for dry rot which is why we always talk about it but we do and if you had a termite problem i would hope that you have reported it to uh, so they found it when they were doing the pre-painting inspection and not only my house but other houses they were doing So uh, what I, I think that this probably needs some more conversation. So, so I'm sorry, Lynn. I mean, These are I, real too important, very important. Wait, I, we, Bill has wait. to respond. I wait. We don't oh, usually what? ask the residents to respond to the residents, so I want Bill no, to I'm respond. And Steve. Let me ask. Okay. The other, the other issue was wood. This, oh. this, okay, this board has basically told staff any external wood surfaces when there is a problem, they have to be replaced. They should not be replaced with wood. We do not want externally uh, exposed wood anywhere. Uh, we're in fact offering uh, people in the community who have lattice work, uh, if they would like to have that lattice work removed, uh, we would do that free of charge just to get rid of the wood. Where is this? 5528C on the back of the We'll do that. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, Bill? Yeah, I think where you came up with the $28, it's, we're talking about the assessments going to $628. That's where the 28 came from. Okay. Okay. And Steve? Okay. Dealing with fire, um, let me first start with uh, the area near the wilderness area. Uh, the Orange County Fire District has been working with our staff, in particular Chief Moy and uh, Ernesto, and uh, they've had to do those, make fire breaks and things like that. Uh, we have, at our own expense, to accommodate what they want us to do. But also inside, uh, there's a certain areas that we have to look at fire retardant plants, and they're going to have to be replaced. Uh, even uh, Director Muldow mentioned to me this last week that we probably need to look at fire retardant materials inside but close to those fire break areas in case uh, we need to come up with something fire retardant uh, versus what we have. Um, there's one other thing that just slipped my mind real quick, but uh, <laughs> if I think I'm of it, I'll sure let you know. Back. About trees. Oh, oh okay. Uh, one thing that... Uh, we are, the staff is looking into also is they know that on some of our slopes that we have um, plants that are in there that have sap and uh, fluids that are flammable. And as you go up, it could be passed from one plant to another up into trees. So they are looking at that, coming up with a plan on how to deal with that here again to be of a fire retardant nature. Some plants they are planning on taking out like uh, Brad mentioned earlier because they are flammable in nature. 
Okay. So, so as everyone is concerned about the flyers, fires, we have some immediate actions that we are working on, and then we also have long-range plans just for overall, correct? Okay, so, uh, all right, so now we have another resident. You have to give your name and manor number. Okay, I'm Lynn Jarrett, 4010 1C. I want to talk about a couple issues about the Garden Villa buildings. Uh, one thing that surprised me today, very surprising, Bill, when you brought up the situation with concrete. The reason I'm saying that is because we put a lot of work into this breezeway project for the pilot, and what good does it do a pilot if it might change? Because it's going to change everything that we've been doing, the concept, everything. That's number one issue. The number two issue for energy, I want you to think about this. This is real important. It just came to my mind today when you were talking about the dryers. You know, a lot of the residents want the platforms on the washers and the dryers. So if you're going to replace the dryers, you might want to consider platforms for those dryers at the same time. And then when we go about replacing the washers in the future, the same thing. People are really wanting platforms because it's really necessary. And thank you very much. Okay. Um, Bill, do you want to comment on your spend thing? Because if you don't, I do, but you can. No, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That's kind of where I was. Going. The basic thing was what Bill is trying to do is to leave the door open. You know, we have a pilot plan. We're working on it. The thing is, is that you might discover after you do this, you might discover, so he doesn't want to close the door, that re-pouring concrete, which involves possibly eight weeks, uh, you know, with the residents might not necessarily be the best way. We might say this pilot is really great, let's keep it going, or maybe we have to make some modifications. So all he's trying to do in his wording is allow for any modification that might have to be made. There's no plan in place to say, okay, well, we did the pilot, let's just leave the grass here forever. That, is, <laughs> no, that isn't part of it at all. It's just to say maybe we can come up with something different or some recommendation that the committee comes up with. But we are not, we're not discussing this now. This is, I was just going to, to uh, for what Bill said, but we're not discussing the Garden Villa thing now. It's just to leave the doors open, and we'd be very excited. We, so, would, we would be remiss if we, understanding the expense involved in using that concrete, we would absolutely be remiss if we did not continue to look and consider alternatives. That, that are at the high standard yep. that is set. Yep. So that's what we have to do. That's our responsibility. I just want to make one comment, you know, is because there's not there's more than three buildings to consider. I think we have what fifty. We are not cons we're not talking about the we're no, talking we're about the pilot only the pilot. We have fifty two buildings that we have to talk about that we have to do. Okay, so oh, so we're one. going to do the pilot, which is three buildings, and then consider a different material for the ongoing program. Is that correct? It, and it, we might say. This is just perfect. Don't, let's not even look. So he, all he wants to do with one word is to leave. No, no, the, I, I just was trying to right. explain to Lynn yeah. that we are going to go through with our three buildings, but we're going to reevaluate the other buildings going forward as to is it the best material that we could use and can we get a better price because it's so expensive. Okay, so, but there's no, we can't, we're certainly not going to say, okay, we did three, that's it. <laughs> We're, so, all right, so that basically covers that. We know that uh, a future agenda item uh, next month is, is um, the, the water heaters, which we were not ready to really do at this meeting because we still have a lot of issues around that. So that's going to come up. So now it's time for director's comments, and then we can recess the meeting. So I'm going to start, oh, well, I can't start with Roy. He's brand new. He would just say, oh, what am I going to say? So I'm going to start with Bunny. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. John? I'm hungry. No. I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone in the village. Uh, you are our family, and we look forward to serving you in the future. James? No Bill? Yeah, just to catch up here, the one thing I knew I forgot to talk about in the energy was that we bought off on the solar project. It's all done. We got all of the documentation that we <coughs> needed. It's being uh, properly stored, and... Uh, we're completed, so thank you very much. Okay, uh, Bert. 
I want to second what Steve said, <clears throat> but also tell you this is a perfect time to reach out to people, to reach out to your neighbors, to reach out to people who live here who you don't know. Uh, there are people here in need. Please don't forget them. And also, take good care of yourself and eat an apple every day. <laughs> yes, doctor. Susie. I'd just like to emphasize that I wish you all a happy holiday. Uh, I left my comments on my... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe we could book you at Clubhouse 3. Okay, that's a good one. All right, Jules. Uh, Jules, he's finished. Roy. Very interesting meeting, and thank you to the chairman for getting us through it. Um, if we can keep on, on, on doing that, um, this won't be uh, as difficult for those of us that have to get up every once in a while. <laughs> Um, I just want to say um, thank you all to the board for your continued support and for your hard work. Uh, so many people say, God, you're so lucky to have such a great board, and I totally agree with them. Um, so thank you very much, and I wish you all a happy holiday, and I wish our wonderful community who voted us on this board a happy holiday also, and we hope that next year is a great one. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned or recessed. 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 Yeah. Yeah.